Well, holy smoke is this ain't no jokers. Welcome into the 45th episode ever of Millennial. I mean, excuse me, the Ice <laughs> Coffee Hour with Graham and Jack. They have made $50,000. $313 in the history of this channel. Congrats, gentlemen, and thank you for having me. This thank is you so much. That was really good. That was really good. You know Mateo right now is right after that yeah. being like calculating, calculating <laughs> all the numbers. I'm curious to see what it's going to be this episode. 50 grand is it? $50,000. That's, that's pretty amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. That's a full-on salary. Yes. That's crazy. How long you guys, about a year, right? You've been doing this? A year and now? a couple months. No. It hasn't know. been a year yet. No, a year in a couple months. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. It sounded like a year and a nah. okay, <laughs> and, and a couple months. Yeah, and almost this is a year. my third time on the channel. So thanks for having me. For you've been on the channel guys. more times than anyone else. Oh, I appreciate that's that, true. Man. We've yeah, had a few people twice, but never for a third time. Okay. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you were just you so good the first two times. We had to have you back. We want to know what stocks to buy. Oh, man. We What's have going on with the stock time. market? What's happening with the stock market collapse of oh, 2021? Gosh. What's going on with Bitcoin? What are you buying right now? What are you selling? Where's the market going to be headed? How do we make money right now this episode? Oh, my gosh. That's a lot. We're going to we got a lot to get into. Holy smoke. Is, uh, you guys got to flip much, my flapjack. How much is that shirt? This shirt, uh, so, okay, guys, I'll be honest. I, I wore this to Troll Graham. It's a $350 t-shirt from Versace, straight from Italy. So, got it at Neiman Marcus, and I saw it in my closet, and I said, what am I going to wear to get Graham's blood boiling? Because you guys know I like to troll you every time. Last time I came with Starbucks. Yeah, that's true. The other time I had Starbucks delivered. I think Blake was there <laughs> <laughs> with Uber, and then we had a tip and everything. And then this time I was like, well, I'm not bringing Starbucks. I'll just wear a Versace shirt. So Yeah, that was the first thing I saw when you were walking up i'm like why yeah what's the point that why did you buy that shirt oh man i don't know i think just for this podcast honestly no you didn't <laughs> what no, went through oh, your yeah. mind I, I, did you have money that you had to get rid of that day yes. like it was a challenge like I, you have to spend the money i think so i just wanted to see does a 350 dollar t-shirt feel better than a five dollar t-shirt and what i can confidently tell you gentlemen no it doesn't it, it feels the same exact could someone tell you that was fruit of the loom and you would be totally like, yeah fine i feel like it. it feels like any other t-shirt i'll be honest maybe slightly more premium um but yeah it, it honestly like i don't feel any different with it on i'll be honest so do you yeah. feel nervous eating like a messy food in that like spaghetti would you be really like sweating i spilled dutch bros on this before i got here <laughs> I, right across but lucky enough it's black so it doesn't show right. up dutch bros just like uh, the lid kind of leaked a little bit when i was taking a drink and just went Shh. oh my gosh <laughs> did anyone ever tell you that you should return the shirt no like, one for ever store credit no no one ever told <laughs> right. me that i don't know what neiman's park uh policy is on that i'll have to check on that <laughs> isn't nordstrom's don't they have a they lifetime have the return policy yeah. yeah i think you could return stuff to nordstrom's without a receipt without any proof of purchase you mm -hmm. just bring it back Mm -hmm. and uh, they hope that you tell it. It's like the honor system, I believe, with Neiman Marcus. I appreciate yeah. that shout-out for yeah. JWN stock. You guys mm -hmm. making any money on Nordstrom? I did. Way? I yeah, bought Nordstrom at what? I think it was like $10 a share, $11 oh. a share. Yep. I didn't put enough in because okay. I figured like, oh, it's Nordstrom's. Like, when's the last time I shopped at Nordstrom's? <laughs> a long time. So I think I put in like seven grand or something. Okay. Sure enough, it's like tripled. Yes. And I'm looking at that. I think recently oh, wow. forty five dollars a share. Or so no, recently. yes, I yeah. thought it was like thirty. It something. was thirty, and then it just made a huge like upward move. I think it's like forty. Are you still now. buying Nordstrom? I'm not buying Nordstrom. I still hold some shares, and unfortunately, I sold some shares in the thirties, and now I'm regretting it. I'm like, why didn't I hold it? Like everything, I think I still got about a little under hundred k probably in Nordstrom. Wow. So, but yeah, it's been a beast, man. It like, and it was just ten to twelve dollars back in that was a few months ago. Yeah, it, it was, was like, like in the fall time, July, like September. Yes, sure. Yeah, like September. I think you could have picked up shares for 10, 12, and now it's like 45. Yeah. What's going on with the market right now? Why is everything so expensive? Yeah. Everything. Oh, my gosh. I, you know, I saw your video about the everything bubble. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it does make me think. I mean, there's just a, there's a lot of sloshing of money out there. There's people looking to put money in different places. There's a lot of people that made a lot of money in the market, in real estate, almost everything. Um, and I think just that money kind of makes people want to make more money and invest more money in the market. And I feel like we've just had this massive like flooding of money out there. And um, it, it's made a lot of stocks get really overvalued. You know, there's definitely people are willing to pay almost any price for stocks right now. I mean, it's, it's, it's substantial, especially high growth. That's the type of stocks right now that everybody wants to 
you know, I just spent twenty five thousand dollars on Pokemon cards. Okay, so I'm a prime example of people have too much money right now. I just feel like there's something going on right now in the market where people feel like they have to invest money out there, and cash is worthless right now, and cash is being devalued. And so let's buy stocks. And there's a lot of people participating in the market. I'm talking the stock market specifically that these people wouldn't usually participate in the stock market. Like you really look at it and I'm, I'm watching people get in the market and I'm talking with big money too. I'm not just talking about like Joe who's got like a thousand bucks and trying to invest his first thousand on Hey, Weeble. don't talk about Joe that way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sorry, Joe. Sorry, Joe. That wasn't directed towards It was another Joe. Sorry, Joe. There's going to be a Joe out there who's watching <laughs> yeah. this. He's like, I can't believe Jeremy called yeah. me out like that. He's like, yeah. But anyways, no, I'm talking about like like people that have like you know, seven figures or even more than that and are investing like madmen in the market. And it's like, you know, no names come to mind, but I'm, I'm thinking about some of these people. I'm like, you know, some of these people didn't usually participate in the market and now they really want to flood some money. And so it, it's an interesting market we're in right now. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm just uh, somebody that's participating in it, trying to find deals. My main thing, you know, when it comes to me, I'm looking for the best deals, regardless if the market's, uh, a, a bubble market, a bad market, an overvalued market, undervalued market. I'm looking for the best deals. And um, there, there's some of those out there, but they're they're few and far between right now. I feel How like. do you find a deal? Where do you look? Walk oh, us through the process. Gosh, okay. Teach Jack. Jack needs help at this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be honest, like 75% or more than 75% of my stock picks now come from the private Discord chat in 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 uh, my private group like i'm getting i i'm in a privileged position now where i just get fed stocks and people are like what's your opinion on this stock what's your opinion on this stock and so sometimes it's annoying because it's like it's too many dang stocks to always think about but uh, sometimes i'm like oh my gosh like they got a really good stock like a lot of these stocks now are coming from people because like in my private group like these people are trained to look at everything i look for in stocks so now i have thousands of people scouring the like <laughs> you know the, the the markets looking for that next gem that next nordstrom that next uh revolve that next upwork that next tesla the next planet or whatever stock you know and so that's where it's kind of like an unfair advantage i have now i feel like because of that but before I would just I would just like look up lists of like S and P five hundred and um, do things like that or just like you know go in seeking alpha see what they're talking about. Sometimes I would just like watch CNBC and look for tickers like coming across the bar and like oh there goes one I never looked in that mm -hmm. stock before um, and just try to like be in the market like like really like in the community of stock market investing and um, and so that's where I picked up a lot of a lot of names. But nowadays like I'll be honest like most of them are coming from somebody in the Discord chat that you know, puts me onto something. And then I'm like, Oh, they, you know, this is a really good one. And the next thing you know, I buy it. And what's your first step when you, you get a ticker, let's say from a student in your group, what's your first step? Co like the fundamentals of the company, like really looking into what does this company even do? And usually within mm, 10 to 20 minutes, I can tell if this is a, like worth me going further. Sometimes there's some companies and I'm just like, well, you know, that's just way over my head. Like somebody could send me some biopharmaceutical company and I'm just like, that's, you know, come on, that's just too much. You know, like I, that, I have no, I have no um, strength in that area. For instance, um, I don't know that sector well, or some healthcare name. Like, I don't know that, you know, what company's going to grow and what it's just, that's too much for me. So I'm looking for the fundamentals of that business first, and then we can go from there. And, um, and then we'll go into the financials and, and things like that. But it's always about the business first. What do they do? Ooh, okay, now we let me look in depth in the business. Now I have a, a rough idea of what they do. So, Do you look up every ticker? Every ticker in terms of what? In like, terms of what's recommended? Or is it just like, oh, that, that seems kind of cool. What's that one? That sounds like an awesome ticker symbol. Uh, sometimes, I mean, usually like... You know, let's say somebody brings me a stock and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm buying blah, blah, blah stocks. Usually they'll give me a little bit of the case. Then I'll look into that ticker and see what the company does, like the profile, like Yahoo Finance, although it's fallen off in recent years. It's still good for like if somebody gives you a ticker and you type it in, like you can go to the profile section and get like in one paragraph, like a little bit of an understanding of that, that company, like what they do, how they make their money. And then you can kind of go from there. So... Yahoo Finance is your preferred method of research? For the, that initial profile part. 
of so let's say you you shared a ticker with me let's say i had never looked into tesla stock right and you're like hey, i'm looking in this electric vehicle company tsla i would go to yahoo finance i would type in tsla i'd go to the profile section and i would see like what they what do they do like because that's gonna that's gonna give me an idea of what this company actually does and then we can go from there and uh, figure out, is this, this worth me taking further? Then I might go to the investor relations page for a company and start doing some research there. And, um, you know, we can go from there. So, But first, we have to thank our sponsor, Grammarly. Recently, we've had a few projects going on around the house, such as installing the aquarium and construction for the pool. I used to spend so much time drafting emails, requesting updates, and coordinating appointments with different companies. It was a nightmare. It was really important to me that my message came across clearly and concisely. Grammarly Premium gave me the tools I needed to save time and effort when writing emails, sending out messages to friends and family, and pushing out team updates. They offer clarity suggestions that help me write more concise sentences without unnecessary or redundant words. And I especially like how Grammarly Premium automatically suggests alternative vocabulary that matches the tone of my message. And with their desktop editor, browser plugin, and mobile app, it has never been easier to revise my writing wherever I go. Do more than just spell check. Say what you really mean with Grammarly Premium. Get 20% off Grammarly Premium by signing up at grammarly.com slash iced coffee. That's 20% off at grammarly, G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash iced coffee. Thank you so much, Grammarly, for sponsoring this episode and back to the podcast it's too bad you're not able to set up a screener that could go through the discord or go through the group and then pick out how many times a certain ticker symbol or company has been mentioned and then see based on that if there's any correlation to its price Ooh, that's a good idea we could do that people have been doing that on reddit's wall street bets yeah they've been coming up with these incredible things that scour the entire page analyze every day how many times a certain stock is mentioned and then trade based on that yeah I have a guy that could literally probably do that in Discord. Like yeah. he's like a genius as far as like figuring out like uh, different bots to set up and things like that. I I could have that's a smart idea. I might have to do that to be honest. Um, you know, but it's not like I can just intuitively feel like what stocks like a lot of retail people are in because if I get suggested this stock over and over again, this is like a stock that a lot of people are in. Like a Palantir is one of those stocks. Uh, PLTR I think's a ticker symbol. Mm -hmm. That's one of those stocks that like. I could just feel it. Like, I don't even need it to sift through Discord. Like, I get so many suggestions about, oh, look into Palantir more. Like, what's your what's your bull case on Palantir? Things like that. What so, do you think of Palantir? I'm still doing research on it. Yeah, that's one of those that's uh, a hard one to wrap your head around in terms of really understanding on a high level. Um, really understanding on a high level, like, what's their realistic opportunity in the market? And um, because a lot of people like, you know, especially if you're new to the market, you just want to put money in a stock. And so, you know, you could almost be fed like any bull case and you're really excited and you're like, oh, I got to buy that stock. They're, they're going to grow. But it comes down to valuation also. That's another, you know, part of the stock market and picking good stocks. Like you got to look at the valuation. So what I'm trying to figure out on Palantir right now is, is Palantir the type of stock that is, you know, a good deal overall based upon what their true opportunity is? Not what, you know, anybody else thinks are opportunity, what I've researched with the company, what I understand with the company. So yeah, it's still a process. Sometimes it takes weeks. Sometimes it takes days to look into a company. Sometimes it takes, I mean, sometimes it takes months or years, you know, for me to really get to that point. Sometimes I never get there. So, you know, there's been times like that in the past where like an AMD stock, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when AMD was two, three bucks a share and I looked at that stock and I was like, wow, man, AMD is really down. But I just couldn't wrap my head around it. And um, obviously, AMD's like, I don't even know how high. 90, now. is it? Probably. 90 now? Yeah. yeah. I think it's a little under 100 or something. Yeah. And that was a stock I could have bought, but I just couldn't quite get there with my head wrapped around it. NVIDIA. Oh, my gosh. I trained this one guy on, like, how to invest. He was, like, another manager at Quick Trip when I lived in Charlotte, North Carolina. Came over the apartment. I trained him on everything completely for free just out of goodness of my heart we like spent a whole day and then he brought me a few stocks one of them was nvidia this is when nvidia was like 18 20 dollars a share mm. i was like ah, i don't know about that one because i just don't quite understand it nvidia obviously grew into a giant and i don't know what nvidia is today it might be 500 dollars yeah. a share this is like you know five or six years ago uh, it might be six years ago now maybe seven years ago but still like you know from 18 20 dollars to 500 plus that's ridiculous man yeah. do you have so, any regrets the regrets usually What's the biggest one? Oh my gosh there's so many i mean all my regrets are always like stocks i actually did understand on a really high level but i didn't invest in them so, you know, stocks like Amazon come to mind where Amazon's not some 
incredibly hard business model to understand. Never bought it. Um, and there's a few other companies that I look at. And, and then the other regret I have in the stock market is like a situation where I sell a stock too early. Um, and then like the stock ended up being a beast. And I'm just like, wait, why did I... Why did I sell that stock again? Like, did I really need to get out of that stock that fast? So those are usually my, my biggest regrets in the market overall. I asked Dave Hansen this, and this was pretty interesting to hear. Do you think that you would be better off overall if you had held on to every stock you've ever bought instead of selling? Ooh, that's really interesting. Mm, man, that's a that's a tough question because some of my companies got bought out. You know, like some of them got acquired by other companies. So it's not like I could have really like you know, uh, held on to that stock. Uh, for instance, like I remember King Digital got bought out by uh, Activision Blizzard, which King Digital was basically, they came up with like the Candy Crush game and, and some of those and they're just like profit machines. Um, and so some of those companies get bought out, so you can't really hold on to those. But yeah, oh man, most of them turned out really well. Uh, 90, I would say 90, 95% probably kept going up even after I sold them. Um, maybe five to 10% went down. But also, when it comes to selling, it's like, where did you put the money? Because maybe you put it in another stock that's actually much better. So, for instance, um, you know, like I sold Apple, uh, what was that, a year and a half ago, two years ago. And Apple's done amazing since then. But I put that money into Tesla, where I thought it was going to be better. And obviously, mm. Tesla's massively outperformed Apple. So, Apple still did great. And I could have just kept my money in Apple. And But at the time, I needed some more money to invest in Tesla. So, I put in Tesla and Tesla outperformed so um, but yeah, I mean, most of them have turned out pretty well over time. So what do you think of, uh, Kathy Wood oh, and boy. her new Tesla prediction? What yeah. did she say? It well, was some absurd number. Yeah. Yeah. So they believe, uh, on a bear case, Tesla is going to be $1,500 a share in 2025. And right now it's like 600, 650. So that that's our bear case. They're like medium case, like they're like one, they think the realistic case, that one is at $3,000 a share. Okay. And so a little less than a five X from here by 2025. And then their bull case is actually $4,000 a share. So, and they do have some cases that are above that, but that's, so they believe basically $1,500 to $4,000 in 2025 Tesla stock will be. How is that possible? So they have them doing some unbelievable revenue numbers. They believe that Tesla is going to be selling, worst case scenario, 5 million cars a year in 2025. Best case scenario, 10 million cars in 2025. Now, as a Tesla bull, that's really hard for me even to wrap my head around that. Because keep in mind, Tesla last year sold about a half million cars. So to go to... 5 million to 10 million, like we're already in 2021 to do that by 2025. She's more bullish than I am. Like and Ark Invest uh, is more bullish than I am. How many cars do like Honda sell? Toyota. Uh, Honda, I don't know off the top of my head. I know Toyota, I think is number one. And they usually do, if I recall, I think it's around 10 million a year, around 10 million a year. So she thinks the that Tesla is going to be selling as much as uh, Toyota. Yeah, it, but the big thing is by 2025. Yeah. See, like, I've always imagined, like, 2030. Okay, we can talk about 2030. Maybe they're the biggest. Maybe they're doing 10 million, 20 million cars. But 2025, like, that happened. Like, you know, years go fast, man. Like, you're already in 2021. 2025 to get to from 500K to 5 million to 10 million. I mean, you're going to need to, you know, ramp up production in a massive way. You're going to need crazy massive adoption around the world basically to hit those type of numbers in that quick amount of time so yeah i mean sh she's more bullish than i am i'm really bullish on tesla but my numbers are further out than than her numbers are so in in arc invest in general let's be clear it's not just kathy wood that comes up with these numbers they do models uh tasha keeney over there and um so i don't want to say like it's just like kathy wood being like oh, this is what i believe it's like arc invest like the whole you know etf so what's to stop them from just making stuff up uh, I mean, because because she could say like yeah. my bull case is ten thousand dollars a share. The mm. price of Tesla starts going up like you know ten percent. Oh, oh, what did I do? Okay, so hit it once. There you go. Whoa, that is cool. I had no idea. So I bought this on Amazon. What? It was like forty bucks, and I could not figure out how to turn it on. 
Mm. But I set it down on the table and it turned on. I was like, okay, maybe there's like a wire loose or something like that. And then I, then I adjusted it and it kept getting brighter. And I thought like, ah, oh, crap, like it's broken. <laughs> it, it's like it won't stay at the same level. It took me probably like 10 minutes to figure out that anywhere you touch on that, I don't know what it is, but it turns up or down the brightness. That was cool, man. Press it again. Look. Whoa. For 40 bucks? Yeah. Whoa, that's magic. Yeah, I'd never seen that before. Wow. Ah! Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's cool, that cool, man. Oh, my goodness. All right. Yeah. Kathy Wood. Is she crazy? Ad break. But first, we have a quick word from our sponsor, Fubo TV. If you're one of the 80 million Americans who are fed up with paying high cable prices and dealing with shady cable companies, well, there is finally an alternative that gives you the cable TV experience at half the cost. It's called Fubo TV. Fubo TV comes with over 100 of your favorite channels, including complete coverage of all of your favorite sports with all local broadcasters, all major sports league networks, NFL Red Zone, ESPN, ABC, CBS, and many more. I'm sure there are plenty of you out there who know how difficult it is to get access to these channels and all the weird and expensive packages you have to buy from cable TV. Graham, wh when did you get in here, dude? Whatever. Anyways, plus you can record your favorite games and shows on Fubo TV's cloud DVR and watch anywhere on any device. You could save so much money by making this simple switch. Well, that's a great point, Graham. And Fubo TV is easy to try. It just takes two minutes to sign up and start streaming all of your favorite cable channels. Sign up for a risk-free trial of Fubo TV and get 15% off your first month by going to fubotv.com slash iced coffee. Thank you so much, Fubo TV, for sponsoring this episode and back to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, gosh. Okay, so, um, yeah, I mean, you know, we should always view things from a context of, it, you know, she's obviously been buying Tesla heavy and Tesla's the name that made Kathy Wood and ARK Invest, obviously, right? over all the other names by far and away. Like if you know Ark Invest, you know Kathy Wood, it's because of Tesla and her predictions and things like that, right? They've been buying the stock. It is really important for Ark Invest for Tesla stock to go up. Let me be very clear about that over the coming years. The reason being is if Tesla stock doesn't go up, people's, you know, not everybody, like some people are going to ride or die with her in the ETF, but there's been a lot of people that have jumped on that bandwagon who is because Kathy Wood and Ark Invest, they're the hot thing on the block on Wall Street right now. And so if Tesla starts going down, performing badly, there's going to be a lot of people that pull their money out of that ETF. And then you kind of get in the situation, you got less and less money going in, you know, ARK might have to sell more Tesla stock. It makes the stock go down even more. It creates more disbelief in it in the short term. And so there's, I could understand that argument about, you know, them wanting to keep Tesla stock inflated or go up a lot, because let's be honest, the more Tesla goes up, not just does it help ARK's returns, it helps ARK's brand. It helps, you know, Kathy Wood's brand and things like that for that ETF. And it'll keep money flowing in so they can continue to buy Tesla stock and other stocks out there. So, you know, I don't want to say that's why they're doing it or something like that or why they have a big price target because they've always had big price targets. It's just like you should at least like understand that it is a possibility. So I have a feeling when people make bold claims like that, if it doesn't pan out, their reputation isn't as damaged as one would think because a lot of people kind of just forget that they ever made that claim in the first place. Yeah, I would say so. You know, some people will definitely, you know, hold it against them for a long time. But yeah, there, there's some truth to that. For instance, like the short seller, and I don't want to call it the short seller community, but like the, the people that are always like, the market's going to crash 50%. You know, I, mm. I remember you referenced Harry Dent recently. In a oh, video. gosh. Yeah. He said, too, the market was going to crash like 90 something percent yes. in one of Kevin's videos. And Yeah. I mean, yeah. so you have those individuals that year after year after year, it's like, this is the end. This is the end. This is the end. And then, you know, people just forget about it. And then when the market gets rough, they, you know, are like applauded. And it's like, oh, they're so smart. But um, yeah, so there, there's some truth to that. I've definitely seen it with those people that are just like always negative and it's like buy gold and things like that. So yeah, I, I could see that. So you'll buy stocks that are overvalued? Will I buy stocks that are overvalued? Not usually. If I'm looking out, if I'm running valuations three years out, five years out, and it still looks like a ripoff, I won't buy it. It just flat out, like, it doesn't matter how much I love the company. If it looks like a ripoff, even on three-year-out and five-year-out numbers, like, I'm good, even if I love the company. Um, 
So I don't mind sometimes paying a premium for a stock, but it has to make sense over the next few years. Like I have to be able to like formulate the numbers and be like, oh, I see how they can fulfill this valuation over time. Oh. You look fit, man. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. I'm trying to make progress. I'm trying to get a six pack by summer. That's my goal. You could be, you know, Jared of Subway. You could be <laughs> the the Jared of uh, Tattooed Chef. Yeah. And be like, this is all because of Tattooed Chef. I, I got to say the cauliflower, like I was really looking into it. I was like, you know, and that's their main ingredient in those products. I was like, dang, man, that's actually a really healthy thing. But, and also like when you spend $350 on mm. Versace shirts, you got to make sure they look decent. You can't be, you know, having, having rolls or whatever, man. <laughs> what's your, what's your workout routine? How what's my workout here? routine? What are you so, doing? Yeah. I mean, sometimes I'll do sprints. Um, when I'm in Arizona, I'll actually play a lot of basketball. Uh, there's a, in our community, there's a nice like basketball and hoop and no one ever plays down there. So I'll like record some videos and then I just go down there like three, four o'clock, shoot some hoop, run around, uh, maybe do some sprints after that, something like that. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's kind of, I do a little more intense workouts than probably a lot of people. I do um, have like a, a boxing bag at the Henderson house. I haven't been hitting it lately, though. I've been really lazy as far as that goes. Um, but yeah, so, you know, some of that type of stuff. So. Graham, and, Graham and I have been working out recently. Yeah. Oh, what? man. There's a yeah, little the, gym in this community. The gym opened up. Oh, it did. Just opened up. Yep. Whoa, so when you exciting. when you come in, are you going to work out with us? I might. That would be so. We much do it a day, like it's a daily thing. Really? Yeah. 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 Do you guys really good? Yeah. Uh, what, what are you guys doing there? Oh, weights. We okay. get we get jacked. You get jacked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we get really big. Uh, yeah. Oh man. It's That's only insane. been a few days, so okay. we're still getting into this. That swing first of things, day was but. so rough. So I probably took like five months off from going to the gym entirely. Yeah. And got back and did my normal workout routine. Okay. Maybe like, you know, 70% of what I would usually do. I felt yep. a little weak, but it wasn't bad. Yep. That next day, I could not move my, like, basically my entire body like was just, <laughs> it hurt so much. And I went to bed and I'd never had this before, but mm -hmm. I woke up, my arm was just, I couldn't move my arm and it was so painful that I thought, like, oh, I might have to take an Advil for this. Oh, my God. I couldn't sleep. I thought there was something wrong. And, like, I, I couldn't move my arm beyond like that because <laughs> it hurt so badly. Did you uh, Did you ever, your muscles ever, like, involuntarily just start, like, vibrating? Like, do, 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 do. Uh, during the workout, yeah. yes. Okay. During the workout, During like the you workout. get the, like you're doing the chest press and your arms are going like, oh like yeah, this, that's, that's you know? not really yeah. what I mean. But yeah, oh. there's a, there's a separate one where just like your leg will just start like, do, 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 do. oh no, 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 no I'm not spasming. That. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. No. Th that happens to me sometimes if I do a really serious workout. Really? Yeah. And it's like, they say that's your muscle growing. I don't know. It might just that's be your BS. muscle growing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it might just be BS. I'll be honest. But yeah, no, it's crazy, man. When you work out like that, it's just a ton of little tiny tears in your muscle and yep. then you got to build it back stronger tattooed chef yeah it's weird how that works it is it's it's you're breaking down the muscle and then yep. it has to grow back even thicker to compensate for that yeah so it's like imagine adding scar tissue on top of your muscle every single time you break it it gets yeah. thicker you break it it gets thicker it doesn't break... sound healthy no it doesn't <laughs> Like when you put it, it like that. Yeah. Like that's really like when you see a bodybuilder like that, they've just yeah. torn every muscle in their body <laughs> multiple times and it's yeah. had to compensate for that. Yeah. It's really what it comes to. It's weird. Huh. Oh, man. I can't work out the way I used to. I, I will say that. And it's not because I don't want to. It's just like, like I get hurt or something, man. Yeah. I'm just a weakling now. Like my back, like I, I got a herniated disc in my back last year. Uh, I did a serious workout not that long ago. And then my foot, I think I, I got like plantar fasciitis, which is kind of like a, a situation in your heel. And I'm just like, dang, man, I'm just, I'm only 31, but I'm like, dang. Like I have so much respect for like professional athletes that can keep performing at a top level at their sports at like like i watch lebron he's like i don't know 38 years or i don't know 37 38 he's still dunking on people's heads i'm like my goodness tom brady just won a super bowl yeah. it's like 45 i like i have so much respect for those guys i'm like how do they do it i'm watching myself at 31 and i'm like i didn't put anything close on my body like those guys have it's crazy man even it's tiger inspiring. woods still yeah. going oh he tiger got in a, he got in an yeah, accident you yeah. Hear that? Yeah. yeah when recently yeah. like the last week it was a bad one man i mean it's to be seen i mean he survived but he it, it's strange so what happened he was going downhill uh in, in newport beach i believe and just he lost control of his car and went through the center median and then went off the side of the cliff and the car like tumbled around so they got him out of the car 
he's he survived, but it's unclear if he's going to be able to play golf again. That's terrible. Yeah. And so people are wondering, like, how do you lose control of the car? Yeah, some people like are that, thinking yeah. he fell asleep. They're like, that. it's the way that accident, I guess, looked, looks like a, a common, like, where you fall asleep driving. And all of a sudden you wake up midway through and you're already it's too late. Right. And it didn't seem like it was speeding down this this hill and, like, he lost control of the car because that's so... Um, yeah. yeah. I don't know. So we'll we'll see. Yeah, right. <laughs> but hopefully everything is what? Yeah. Hopefully Crazy. he's all right. Yeah. But Do anyway. you think that the way that you research stocks and financial statements and stuff like that translates to other portions of your life, like like analyzing the nutritional facts of like a food or Catching something chef. like that? <laughs> uh, maybe. I don't know. I was probably into nutrition way before stocks, but I don't know. Maybe. Um, I will say like, you know, stocks you know, all the research I do in the companies because I have been involved in like investing. I, I think it makes me better at like business overall. Um, because I just understand like, you know, like you just, you learn so much from these companies. Like I'm doing super in-depth research. I'm like, Oh, that's how they're making this money. Oh, that's how they're getting this gross margin. Um, you listen to conference calls and you pick up on so many different things, you know, just business related that I think it really like helps me out big time. Um, when it comes to like, if I'm going to make moves out there and things like that. So (laughs) <laughs> what are you laughing Shit, Jack? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Was that a weird question? No. Oh, okay. It was a fine question. I was thinking about what to say afterwards, and oh, we, we I was hoping you would just keep talking, and then by <laughs> by could, yeah. then one of All us. Right, would everyone have wants to know this, Jeremy. Yeah. Okay. What's your option strategy like right oh, now? Like, gosh. are you doing anything? Yeah, I got one option open right now. One call option. So what I like to do is I like to play um, options that are basically two years or more in advance usually. So what I like to do is September, October, uh, between September and November of each year, options come out that are like a little over two years in advance, like two years and like three months, okay? And so what I like to do is I like to say, is there any stock I have a lot of conviction in over the next two years and whatever and um, that I really, really believe in that is gonna go up a lot? And then I look at the option prices and sometimes I buy them. Uh, so the only option play I have open right now is Dropbox. And it is up over 100%. We've done very, wow. very well on that one. Yeah, it's been tremendous. Um, you bought one call? No, I got I bought $21,000 worth of calls. And I think there were, I don't know, between 45 and 55 right now. Um, and so we're doing really well on that one. But that was one of those that I'm like, there's just no way I can't, you know, when I bought those, there's just no way I couldn't see Dropbox like being a beast over the next two plus years. And so I was like, I'll throw 21,000 worth in, in the call options. And, you know, I don't do a lot of, of option moves because it does put you with that like time situation. I don't like mm-hmm. that where you, it has to go to a certain price by a certain date or you're going to lose a bunch of money. And so, you know, that I'm not a fan of, but my gosh, there's a lot of money to be made. But um, I mean, the problem is, man, a lot of people lose money when options, I'll be honest. There's there's certain individuals. I have one that's going to be a new coach for us. Like they consistently make profits, but they're not doing the type of risky strategies. Like even my strategy, even though it's two years out, is still considered risky because mm-hmm. those can expire worthless. You can do a lot of different strategies, like selling covered calls and things like that. That I don't feel like getting into right now because I don't feel like explaining it because <laughs> it's I'm like um, my brain's not there. I need a whiteboard to actually explain <laughs> options in detail. But there's some strategies like that that you can really make consistently pretty good money in. And there's there's other ones as well that you know of Jack because you're the options master and I learned from you. <laughs> but, the expert at one percent per trade. Yeah, yeah. hey man, one percent. Sometimes. Per <laughs> yeah, there's, there's different. There's just different strategies out there, man. But uh, you know, that's. Um, yeah, I don't do a lot of those moves. I, most of the time, I'm just like, let me just buy the dang stock. And sometimes I'll look into far out like calls, and then I'm like, okay, I have to pay this. I need to go to it. Let me just buy the stock forget trying to mess around with that so what do you think of the whole GameStop fiasco oh my gosh where do you start with that Mm. I mean I don't have a strong opinion on it I mean I know a lot of people are super opinionated on it actually I'm surprisingly not opinionated on it um you know I don't know I don't have that it's funny because I'm the stock market guy but I don't have a a strong opinion on that it's like um it is what it is I, I don't know like you know it's not a stock i'm interested in it's not a bad stock but it's not a stock that i'm like oh, i gotta buy that stock um i think it's good in the respect that it gets a lot of people into the market a lot of people are like oh let me start buying stocks and and at least like 
you know, sometimes you have to get people into the market through different means, right? Not everybody is going to be like me and like super like go getter. Like, oh, I can't wait to start looking into companies. I want to be the next Warren Buffett. Like, not everybody wants to do that. Some people you have to drag them into the stock market through different avenues, right? And so, I think a situation like that gets a lot of people excited. And so. From that perspective, I'm happy. You know, the, the whole rest of it, it's like, you know, it is what it is. I don't really have a strong opinion on it, to be honest. So, Does it worry you that it's still trading above $200 a share? I it's, a, it's a $15 yeah. billion dollar valuation right now for GameStop. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say it worries me. Um, I mean, whether it goes up a bunch or, or down a bunch, you know, I think people that have really been buying that are prepared to lose their money for the most part or see the value go down or something like that. Um, and I think they understand that risk. I think the same way, you know, somebody, you know, we live in Vegas, right? So, I mean, somebody goes down the sports book, like they could win a bunch of money, but they also understand, oh, man, I'm, this might go this might go bad and I might lose everything. GameStop, I don't think that's the type of stock you lose everything in, though. Let me be very clear. It's just whether GameStop goes up over the coming years or whether it goes down, let's say, 50% over the next few years. I think that's the real question with GameStop. I don't look at that business model and say that's going to zero. It also is hard for me to see that going to 1000 I mean, I've seen people saying GameStop's going to $1,000. I've seen $1,000, $5,000. Yep, and $10,000. $10,000. $10,000 yeah. was the one yeah, I heard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, There's been people on Reddit being like, Forty thousand dollars. It's gonna hit yeah. forty grand. We just got a whole lot. Like, yeah, no one's paying forty thousand yeah. dollars for this. Yeah, yeah. You know, people just will talk crazy. People go bankrupt before that stock. Well, is it ever was the idea then. that it was overshorted by the instant, like, and they have to buy it at whatever they price. Wouldn't. They would. They don't have to buy it. They yeah, because they were locked into contracts. No, they would just listen. We're 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 done. We're, just, we're, <laughs> we're bankrupt. <done>. <laughs> listen, we that's, quit. Realistically, that's what's gonna happen. They can't just invent money out of nowhere to pay for something right. that they can't afford they, it. They would go bankrupt. They would just go bankrupt. Right, exactly. Yeah, and then nobody gets their 40 grand. Yeah. They're just going to say, I'm sorry, I'm not playing any, this game anymore. I don't like this game. I knew someone. be the Eric Cartman of that. Be like, all right, screw you guys. I'm going home. Yeah. I know. I I, uh, I knew someone who was so convinced in GameStop that they had everything that they owned except their fully paid off house. But every last penny, wow. aside from that, into GameStop, it was nearly a million dollars in eight hundred dollar call options that expired yesterday. Oh, oh, it, oh what, well, what? What? What do they? Wow. wow. Wait, so, so they what so they put yeah. in. They had like. Maybe, I, th I think it was like 80 grand or something like that, and it went up to to like nine hundred thousand dollars, and they held. Over the weekend, two weeks ago, into Monday of this week, with like a million dollars in eight hundred dollar calls, so they would be able to buy GameStop at eight hundred dollars per share. Wow! Yesterday, and it, obviously it didn't hit it. So what? Has, so just the money. Well, gone. I don't know if yeah. he exited his position, but I know for a fact if he if he did exit his position, I'm sure at le he at least lost like 50, 60, 70 percent. Are these of a the million. people you're hanging out with? I was telling him that was a terrible idea. I was telling him that's a no go. But who is this guy? His name's Crispy Stocks. He's in the mentorship group. Are you serious? I told him not to do it. Yeah, I said, I said, dude, you you turned like eighty grand in, into nearly a million. Get out. Mm -hmm. And J Bay was telling him too. He was like, dude, you should get out of that. Like, you've already made so much money. He's like, oh, I'm convinced it's going to ten thousand dollars a share. Jeez, why didn't I hear about this? Because it was on a Tuesday. You weren't there. That sounds like an oh. interesting. Wow. You, I'll be honest. That's no, I, I, we could actually have like a segment with him on or something. He has a YouTube channel and he's like, he was so convinced in it. He said he was fully prepared to go work at Wendy's. Like if, if it expired worthless, be totally fine going, working at Wendy's restarting. Mm. That's just greed. Mm. That's greed though. When you, when you turn 80 into how much was it worth at the peak? It was like a million. That's just greed. He said he was going to be worth 10 million was his projection. I mean, what could you do? Yeah. Hey, man, we live in Vegas. I'm sure somebody on the strip tonight is going to turn some silly small amount of money into some stupid amount. Yeah. And then they're going to get calmed that night and then they're going to stay another night and they're going to lose it all. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, I know. gamblers want to gamble. It's just That's the hardest part. I keep looking at like a hand of blackjack and I'm like, well, if, if I put 25 <laughs> on this hand and I just keep pushing and I keep doing yeah. this for like 10 hands in a row. That's it. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm set. I can't believe the last, not to change the subject, but I've been, the last two times I went to the Encore, I didn't lose money. 
Mm. It's a miracle. And one of the times was yeah. with you. I don't go that often, but when I have, it's actually it was probably twice in the last six months. And that's a miracle because you know when I go every to, single time yeah. you manage to lose money. Yeah. Not even doing anything risky. Yeah. It's not like you're making stupid bets yeah. and like, oh, I lost. You're you're betting the same as everybody else, but yeah. somehow yeah. you <laughs> always lose money. Lose. Oh gosh, I know. It's like I go there wanting to lose. Oh man. But yeah, somehow the last two times I didn't. But anyways, to get back to that whole GameStop situation, man, it, it's it's a messy situation. There's no doubt. Um, we'll see what happens with it over time. You know, um, yeah, you know, man, I don't know. It's I don't know what else to say about it, honestly. You know, it's just... Does it wor- see, I'm worried that that's the state of the market right now. Like, yeah. that's not a sign that we're in a healthy mark i mean no. i'm sure every stock is going to have little pumps and mm-hmm. but for that to happen on such a wide scale worries me that like there's no way that's healthy there's no yeah. way that we're in an economy right now that should support something like that yeah yeah it's just it's what's going on at the moment man it, yeah it is it is a little worrisome like you're talking about people so flush with cash i think i'm the perfect example of, of buying the car like i would rather mm-hmm. buy the car than keep money in a bank account because yeah. I think the car is safer than cash. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not like a conspiracy theorist about anything. Yeah. Like I'm not like it's too extreme on that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking like if I'm doing that, how many other people are doing the same? It's true. Yeah. How many other people are that flush with cash right now to throw everything they have into the market? Yeah. No, it's a really good point. I mean, there's a lot of people making money from the GameStop situation different ways. I do have a friend. He, he uh, if I recall, he sold some... Um, $800 strikes that expire in April and he got oh, like $31 premium. So he, and I think he did four contracts. So he's going to clear like $12,000. And as long as GameStop doesn't go to, you know, $800 plus by April, I don't remember. Well, even 16. if it does, he's selling them for $800 a share, which is like. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he's looking good. I mean, he could get into trouble if maybe, you know, I don't know. The stock really goes crazy, but um, yeah, I mean, he's going to, yeah, he's going to make like $12,000 in a fairly low risk situation, right? I would say there's probably a 1% or maybe even less than a 1% chance of that happening to make $12,000. Like, hmm, that's pretty attractive. <laughs> that's wild. Yeah. If people are willing yeah. to pay almost any price for those options on GameStop, just because of the whole, oh, it might go to a thousand soon or something yeah. like that. So what do you think about the stock Fisker? Fisker, I haven't looked into in depth yet. You yeah. should. I've looked into Lucid, but not Fisker yet. Why not? I just haven't had a chance to. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just like a massive backlog of stocks I always have to look, look into. Look into Fisker. Fisker, what That's, do you see there? I just, listen, I, I, I'm i not a stock guy. Mm-hmm. I liked Fisker back when they first came out with the Fisker Karma. This is like 2011, okay. 2012. And uh, I, thought, I thought they were going to win against tesla i thought wow. they had a they had a cooler car okay. this is before the the self-driving whatnot yeah. they had a cooler looking car the problem with the car was that they caught on fire oh so geez. so and, and then they had some financial issues they weren't able to fix the cars they went bankrupt then another company bought them okay kept them but then is they're now remaking these cars Wow. So I don't know. I think there's potential there. They got a really cool car. They're coming out with a few other options. Is it a hot stock? With a, like on fire hot stock? No. Or, okay. No, it hasn't. It's, it's been underappreciated. It's been trading between twelve dollars and like twenty three, twenty four for mm. gosh, how many months now? Wow. I think just being a part of the EV sector, like that stock could blow up. I know. You, you know? think that stock yeah. could blow up like on fire? Like Neo. On fire. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it could be a Neo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Honestly. Interesting. Yeah. I, I looked into Lucid so far, and that's about it. Oh, obviously, Neo and some of those companies. But yeah, I haven't looked into Fisker. So yeah, I might have to take a peek there and see if there's something there. Obviously, that's been a, a, a space that's been so hot. Like EVs, yes. just everybody wants the next Tesla, the next Tesla, the next Tesla. People are really desperate for it, man. But uh, yeah, and there's been some stocks that have gotten hammered in that space. I don't know how much you guys, you know, keep up with it, but like Workhorse, oh my gosh, that stock fell, I think, 60, 70%, like in a snap of fingers because they didn't get some contract with USPS that they were supposed to. Mm. Like, my gosh, that's devastating. Um, uh, Lordstown Motors, I think that one's down, I want to say 50, 60%. Yeah. That's a weird situation there. Um, and so some of those stocks have just gotten absolutely obliterated. Never mind. Like, here's the thing. If the NASDAQ goes down a bunch more, like, you know, I'm not even talking like a ton. I'm talking like 10%. That's going to mean Tesla's down 20 to 30%. That's going to mean some of those other stocks are down even more than that. So I don't think that's the thing people understand about the market. And, um, 
you know, obviously if everything goes great, NASDAQ keeps going up, NASDAQ keeps pumping. Tesla's doing great, right? And a lot of the higher risk plays are going to do great. But all it takes is NASDAQ, like if the NASDAQ falls 10% next week, which probably isn't going to happen, but let's just say it hypothetically did, Tesla's down 20, 30 plus percent in that amount of time easily because Tesla just goes down a lot more and the market goes down usually 2x to 3x. On the flip side, if Mm. the market does great, Tesla goes up 2x to 3x more. And then all those other higher risk plays in a Tesla get hit even harder. And so some of those can go down 30, 40% with only a 10% pullback in the NASDAQ. And that's, that's I think, sometimes what people don't understand. That's why it's really dangerous to go on margin with those sorts of stocks. And I don't think that's what people understand sometimes. They they just think about the upside. They're like, ooh, I'm going to margin out extra money in these. And um, really what they're not realizing is, man, it's, true. you know, it can go south fast. Mm-hmm. And when it goes south fast, man, next thing you know, you have margin calls and it gets messy quick do you think we're running out of growth like what what more can contribute to this because i feel like we just did the stimulus package we've already somewhat priced in a full recovery Mm -hmm. we're getting people vaccinated what else is there to boost this further yeah now it's going to come down to corporate earnings i feel like from here now as the economy opens back up all eyes are going to go on to earnings and for the next probably two to six quarters i would say and now it's like, now we're going to be into a stage where it's like, prove me stock market, like prove to me what you're going to do, like prove to me companies, like what your EPS is and things like that. Prove to me that you can justify these valuations. If corporate earnings are extremely strong throughout 2021, there's no doubt we could have more potential upside, but that's what it's really going to come down to. The earnings have to be strong. They have to justify these valuations and, um, and then people will continue to buy the stocks, right? If, if the value, if. You know, earnings are bad, and it's like, oh, this wasn't everything we're cracked up to be. And then it's like, oh, okay, that's not looking good. So, yeah, we'll see. Do you use margin in your account? A little bit, yeah, because I got a 1.55% now. I negotiated with Fidelity. Thanks to Kevin. Shout out, Kevin. Yeah. If you see this video, which you probably won't because you record videos all day. But if you do. <laughs> Kevin watches everything. <laughs> yeah, I know. You He's would crazy. be surprised. <laughs> He's one of the first people to comment on almost uh, every video on the main channel. Wow, yeah. Kevin, if you're watching this, comment. It. I'm watching this. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm watching this. One, two, three. There we go. I'm oh, watching wow. this. One, two, three. So he's got to be precise about oh, it. I like that. I like that. But yeah, it's the ultimate test. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, yeah, shout out to Kevin for giving me that lower margin rate. So yeah, I will. Um, but the thing I like to do is I like to always make sure I'm not overextending myself. Um, or anything like that, um, you know, because like I said, you can get it can get dangerous fast. Another thing I like to do is I like to focus on companies, buying companies that I feel like are undervalued, that there's very limited. If I'm going to buy a margin, it has to be with stocks that have very limited downside for me. You know, like, so for instance, some stocks that I bought some on margin of recently would have been Walgreens, put some money, margin money in that when it was like 40 a share roughly. And I looked at that one and I'm like, OK, like what's the chances that one falls? 30%, even 20%, I feel like extremely minimal. And obviously it's done pretty well. Uh, Corsair Gaming, I've been doing a little margin money in that one recently because that one's down to a forward P of like 20. So I feel like th- there's a little potential short-term weakness there um, around potentially situation where there's a lockup coming this upcoming week. So maybe there's a little more sell-off for the next few weeks or something like that. But then I feel like from there's upside um, margined a little bit in Tattooed Chef where I feel like there's limited downside there because it's like a $1.7 billion mark cap with 200 mil cash and crazy growth. So yeah, I, I really have to feel protected if I'm going to do anything on margin and I have to have the money to back it. So I went a hundred percent margin in my Robinhood account, Whoa. just in my Robinhood account. Okay. Uh, right. Like in during the dip, not at the bottom, but as it was going down. Wow. I tried to time it. <laughs> Good for you though. You probably Thanks. did well. No, I didn't do well. Oh, because geez. because this was as Jack it was, has paper hands. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, no, as soon no, as he no. loses 2%, well, he's like, oh. I'm out. So things didn't go as bad as they could have gone. Okay. So as it was going down, I bought like I want to say like 120 shares of Apple. Okay. Like as it was going down. And I bought uh some more Palantir, some other just like random stocks, some Neo and stuff like that. Yeah. But it still continued to go down, but once I bought them, I hedged my position with some covered calls. Okay. So although it did continue to go down, my options had value. They they went up in value, and my options actually shielded me Ooh. from 
Wait, now all of the downside that I would have felt. Are you talking about the March 2020 crash or this most recent one? This most recent oh, one. Oh, okay. I was a little confused. Okay, cool. No, yeah. no, no, yeah. I was, I, was, well, I was thinking you were talking about that one. I'm like, well done, man. Like, that's <laughs> no, no, no. Beast, but I no. went down a lot, but it, it could have hurt a lot worse had yeah. I not hedged oh, man. my position. I, I, I was so scared to buy stocks in March 2020. We, we talked about regrets earlier. Yeah, I was really, I didn't buy anything. I started buying in April. So I didn't get the exact bottom, unfortunately, in a lot of stocks because I was like, you know, I was really confused on like, like, you know, when have we ever sh shut off money velocity and like, how does all this play out? But man, like, I remember, I remember seeing Win at $35 a share one day. I remember seeing Uber, Uber de Booba stock, and I think it was $14 a share. Mm. And um, <clears throat> yeah, just some of those pricing and I had cash, but I was really scared. So I started buying again in April when we had, like, had, you know, we had kind of started going up again and I was watching what was happening and they were talking about stimulus and I was like, okay, let me start entering. But man, some of those prices, I think it was March 23rd was the very lows. Oh my gosh, man. Congrats to anybody that bought March 23rd, 2020. You did well for yourself. That was a scary time, man. <laughs> yeah. I bought, the, the issue that with me is I started buying too early. Okay. So I started buying the beginning of March okay. uh, a little. So this is just like after the 15% dip, mm -hmm. bought in a little bit thinking, oh, I'm a genius. Mm. I'm a genius. Look yeah. at all these fools over there yeah. buying in. And it kept dropping. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> let, let, me, let me just take a step back. I don't want to just like invest everything. And then I, about April yeah. is when I started going, going in. But I yeah. missed that bottom kind of coming up. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was that was definitely you know the scariest time I've ever been in the stock market because I mean it came out of nowhere once in a hundred year health event and then it was just like you know that's just something you you know you you can't prep for it it's just you have to go through it to really experience it and, and things like that I think one of the biggest things is like I've always learned is like just to keep the faith yep um you know and then one of those situations that is gonna work out you know you don't know how it's gonna work out but it's gonna work out and um, yeah Jay Powell man you can't stop that man he's unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they're they're basically they, they've gotten the market to a point where they're not going to let it fail? They're not they're not going to let it drop more than like 30-40%. That's that's kind of almost the way I feel sometimes. Uh. I mean, yeah, I feel like they're really really scared um to really like let the market go down in any significant way. And um yeah, it, yeah, I do kind of almost feel like that to be honest. I I do. It's um you know, and it kind of almost makes you feel, it almost makes you want to feel fearless in the market. It almost it makes you want to say, let me throw everything. Let me go all in on margin. You know, let's go all in on calls because you almost feel like it can't go that bad because they're going to save the day. Like they'll just pump some money out there right. and things like that. But the interesting thing about this last time was they had the excuse to pump money out there because it was a once in a hundred year health event. And because the government force the economy to close in states and you know federal government and everything like that so when you when you come from that context it's like okay you can do everything but it, you know i mean it still does you, you kind of think like what happens if we had a traditional recession um where it's not because of a one, once in a hundred year event can they still get away with the, the money flood out if there there's unemployment i i do think so okay yeah because yeah. then they would be worried about the entire economy collapsing, yeah. lending, drying up. People are losing their jobs or losing mm -hmm. their homes. They can't they can't have that. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a really good point. And then the other thing is with this whole, you know, most recent situation, I think now they're going to have a lot more discussions, not just, you know, soon, but over the coming years about like, you know, should we start sending a thousand dollars to everybody that makes under 100K every month? I think those are going to be discussions that are probably going to be the most uh, heard yeah. in American history, which is going to be interesting. So if you don't make 100K a month, then you get... Or 100K, <laughs> you said, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I, was, I was speaking with Graham Stephan. Uh, I was thinking yeah, different For everyone amounts. making under 100,000 a month, you get... <laughs> Gosh. I, I'm sorry about that. I apologize. Uh, uh, 100... 100k a year okay yeah so it faces out at 200,000 a month <laughs> oh, oh and for families it's for families earning up to four hundred thousand dollars a month <laughs> there, there are people that make under 100k a month are you telling me <laughs> that's normal no. oh gosh yeah no anyways but yeah that, that should be interesting yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens so what do you think about ubi 
man, for everyone I, earning yeah. under a hundred thousand a month, struggling. I mean, you know, obviously it it uh, would probably benefit the economy well. Um, you know, I am not a professional economist, and I'll never pretend to be one. And I'm also not a government official, and so I don't know what that would do to budgets. I don't know if that would create a messy situation. I know obviously there's, um, you know, there's a lot of folks that feel that if we just give money for free that it's taking things too far, right? Uh, you know, some folks out there are okay with, you know, food stamps or... Unemployment. Yeah, yeah, unemployment. Or let's say even a situation where um, you get uh, free health care, you get your health care taken. And I've been on that system before. Like, you know, there was, you know, when I didn't have much money, like I had to be... Um, man, there was this weird like rash that happened on my body and I had to go to the hospital for a few days. And this mm. is when I was working at Walgreens making like eight twenty five an hour. So I didn't have, uh, you know, health insurance and I didn't have any money, obviously. So, you know, that was like 20, I was either $19,000 or $23,000 in bills. Right. And I didn't have to worry about it. Like the state just paid that state of Arizona. Cause I made under a certain amount of money. And so, you know, if I had to actually pay that debt at that time, that would have been devastating. That would have been super bad. You like, I just wasn't in the financial position. So, you know, people are okay with that. They say, okay, you, you can eat, you can, you can have healthcare. But where a lot of folks have issues is if you're just giving straight up money to folks that they can spend it on whatever. And, um, you know, I can understand those concerns and I can understand the concerns coming from the other side that say, Hey man, I, I need money. Um, so I, I mean, I understand both sides. It's going to, it's going to be a messy situation to ever get it passed. I feel like, um, because of that reason, it, it's like, are you changing, you know, a lot of folks have feel like, are you changing the fabric of the United States, um, in what we mean? And what we represent if you just start giving people money for free, as, as some folks would, would say. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I have no opinion on it, really. I'm like, you know, I would love to see studies that are done. Um, I think this, this whole situation is going to be interesting. Like, if the economy does tremendous, and not just ter in terms of like the short term, but I'm talking over the next several years, I think there's going to be a lot of push for this potentially being a thing out there. I think if the economy doesn't really benefit that much and it just feels like assets. I think people are going to say well, that was, that was not a good idea, you know, or, or things like that. So yeah, I, I'm watching it. We'll see how it plays out. Hmm. Yeah. Well, what do you guys think? If you want to share <laughs> Graham, your opinion, you opinion on yeah, it? yeah, go ahead. Uh, Jump in the fire. <laughs> yeah. Give me, I was just collecting my thoughts here. Yeah. You first. Jack I think home. that, well, okay. I don't want to say I think that because I don't really know what I think, but it, what makes sense to me is that there is like a basic standard of living, okay. right? Where obviously like you can afford the the things that you are required to live, okay. right? Uh, I, I I don't want to be like political or anything. Yeah. <laughs> That's really not my thing. Yeah. I listen. I, where, where I feel there's so much government waste. Mm -hmm. There's so much money that's wasted. I have a feeling we could probably afford it as is okay. if we just cut all the crap I, I, mm -hmm. there's so much just administration and so many just big salaries required just to just to distribute every little thing and like mm -hmm. you know check every i think there's just a lot of waste i think if we could find a way to expedite it we could probably actually still do that mm -hmm. but save a lot of money in the process and cut other things that maybe aren't as efficient and just straight up just send everyone a thousand bucks but yeah. cut out a lot of the other things that just are no longer needed because of that I agree. I actually was looking into it and the city of Santa Monica makes mm -hmm. over or sorry, it makes nearly one billion dollars in revenue every year. And if you go to the city of Santa Monica, it is not very nice. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's not very clean. Mm -hmm. There's nicer a, than Venice. Well, sure. It's, but it's, it, yeah. there, like yeah. there is like a little bit of poverty and stuff like that. Okay. And it's not like the nicest area, but considering how much money that they're making, you would yeah. expect that they would be able to handle some of those things. Yeah. You know what I mean? And increase mm -hmm. the standard of living for the residents. Interesting. But they, yeah. they don't. Jack is angry that he gets parking tickets. <laughs> I get so many from Santa Monica. Really? So yeah. many of them. Wow. And you know what? Each, they make so much each of them, no. $73. 73 73 I looked it up and from the, like the the parking enforcement I think it was like some ridiculous like 15 million dollars every year That's yeah. a successful mm. business Yeah like it's Where it's can absurd I, get by that stuff? I know 
<laughs> so yeah, You're I think that there is there is a lot of government waste. I think undeniably yes. there is a lot. Yeah, Santa Monica was bad. They, man, so they charge you for uh, like a rent control fee. So if you have a multi unit in Santa Monica, they charge you every year okay. to basically be a part of a of a registry where they just monitor what you're charging the tenant and they're monitoring the rent increases. So what I found crazy is that in Santa Monica, the maximum rent increase is either 3% per year or $44 per year, whichever is greater. Yeah, that's not much. So if you're renting a place in Santa Monica for like, let's say $8,000 a month, the maximum rent increase every year is $44. Jeez. 44 bucks. Yeah. And you have to pay for them to oversee yeah. all of that. So I, I so when when I got my place, uh, they automatically bill you for that rent, that rent control fee, mm-hmm. even though I was living there. Wow. They bill me for it. And then I have to go and prove that I'm living there for wow. them to refund me. So I actually did all this work and I got like my 200 bucks back. Because mm-hmm. just out of principle, I'm like, there's no way they're, they're collecting that fee from me. Wow. My gosh. It's, it's run yeah. very poorly. Yeah. Jeez, yeah, man, I know. We we thought about starting um, a life insurance business recently, and we, you know, I had like the lawyers looking into it and things like that. And you know, when we got to first, so first off, if you want to do insurance, you have to go like state by state. It's not like you just get like it's it's complicated. And so I was like, well, what about California? And I don't, no, 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 <laughs> not California. Like, there's so many easier places to do business than than California. But anyways, you know. Yeah, it's it's uh you know I, I don't want to speak on it because I've never lived there. I just I've I've heard stories from a lot of different yeah. people that it's just it's it's a hard place to do business. It's a hard place to do a lot of things. So yeah, yeah. The yeah. only thing for me with Vegas, Vegas is very much like do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. I like that, but it's the HOAs. Oh, the HOAs. The HOAs. Ah, yeah. oh, jeez. I I didn't realize there are two HOAs, and it's my fault for not oh, understanding. The- and, yeah, and, uh, we're an HOA within an HOA, mm-hmm. yep. and I we didn't are, realize here? that. Yes, yeah. I thought you said there was no HOA. Oh, oh, I no. would have never said that. <laughs> are you sure? A hundred percent sure. Yeah. Even a few months ago? Yes. Who do you think pays for everything here? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't just come included. Jack. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, okay. Jack is blinded because he's just like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm there, living in my own world. I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, laundry just cleans itself. I don't know. <laughs> we don't have a laundry machine here. I he know, makes yeah. fun of me because I, I can't do my laundry. Or I don't do my laundry, but I cannot. We don't have a laundry machine here. Do you need me to buy you one? I'll be happy to. They're on back order. Like, we already yeah, have some. Yeah, we, we ordered one. It was supposed to come. It originally was supposed to come November. Okay. Then it was like the first week of January. All then right. they moved it to March. And now it's like April 16th, I think it's supposed to come here. Jeez. April 16th, Where right? Who you guys order this thing from? Who's Online. Supposed? That was Wayfair. Oh, and I, I purposely got that one because it said it was in stock. You guys have a fridge now, though, right? No. No. We have a mini fridge. Okay. The refrigerator was terrible. So the refrigerator I ordered before the house actually closed. Okay. So this is like five months ago. Yeah. And it was a special refrigerator to fit the spot. This this spot, to have it like be flush with the cabinetry, mm-hmm. it was like the special size. Only a few companies make it. So okay. I didn't have a lot of choice. Yeah. But KitchenAid was one of them. So I okay. ordered from KitchenAid. Yeah. And what I don't like is I ordered through one of their like Black Friday sales. Okay. And when I did that, I locked in like a discount of a little bit. Yeah. But it's so back ordered. It's so delayed. Oh Even though it said also it was in stock. Oh, wow. Supposed to be delivered by New Year's. Never did. Yeah. And then it's now April. Yeah. But March, but if yeah, I, oh, and then I called and I said, can you cancel me mm-hmm. on this? Uh, and she says, you know, fine, but then you lose the Black Friday deal. Mm. Like, oh, Dude, it's not worth it. We just got to yeah. get a fridge here. Yeah, yeah but then it's I got to like, order for, there's only a few companies that have that size. So that, mm. you know. But the stress, the time, all of that, it's not worth it financially. It's like that Apple it. pencil yeah. situation. Yeah, the Apple the pencel. Money that night, you know? uh, it's it, like it's like yeah. the Volvo situation yeah, I, too. I wanted them to give me a, a, gosh, a discount and something just for the inconvenience, but they just, they're ruthless. They don't care. They, did you like really like try to get into it with them or did they I did not not like aggressively right, but right, you know right. firmly I, I stated my case <laughs> and she looks like, there's nothing we could do it's <laughs> I think it's terrible uh, you now you do an exposed video you know what I could do that like I did with Samsung I got a um a dishwasher for a rental property it started pe- the front you little panel yeah, yeah it started leaked. peeling yeah. within days 
And then by the time they sent someone out, sorry, it's past our 30 day thing, even though I reported it mm-hmm. days after they sent someone so far, you know, ahead in advance. Mm hmm. So when I post on Instagram, they finally were like, okay, we'll fix it. Yeah. But I got a lot of people complaining. And thank 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 to thanks to all of you guys that when I posted on uh, their Instagram, I tagged them and then everyone went to their page. It's like make I Graham Stephan yeah. right. <laughs> this is not good what you did to Graham. Please help Graham. And so all the comments were like that. I love it. And it worked. It yeah. worked. So like, you know, I, I might have to do that with KitchenAid. I don't want to have to do that, <laughs> yeah. but we might have to go to KitchenAid and just take the mob and just yeah. let's hammer them until I get my refrigerator. Get Grandma's refrigerator. That's not fair for Grandma's refrigerator. We should, we should Dude, do that. Yeah. It's, it's funny. Yeah. It was a, re- a situation recently where we we're having some trouble with uh, the pool we have in Arizona with the finish of it. Mm-hmm. And, um, my dad was like, yeah, you should, you know, put your lawyers on them and, and come after them and things like that. And I'm like, first, dad, like my lawyers don't like deal with that type of stuff. And I'm like, second, like if I really wanted to hurt them, I would come out on social media about this. Yeah. Like he's like, well, they'll fear lawyers. I'm like, you know what they fear worse is like the retaliation from like somebody that has a lot of followers and like, you know, ruining that brand or hurting it severely, you know, by posting like you did on, on the Samsung thing. And it's not even like, you know, super malicious. It's just like yeah. you but all of a sudden they listen because all of a sudden they're like, oh, he just put it out there and now 80,000 people, 100,000 people, whatever is going to see yeah. this. Oh, crap. We got to we have to fix this quick, man. Yeah. So. It's cheaper for them just to fix it. Yeah. I was ready to make a video. I told Jack. If yeah, he was going to make it, a video. I was going to make a video on the, the Samsung dishwasher. Wow. Sec, se, a second channel. But you just that a 10 minute piece explaining the situation, what's yeah. happened, showing the dialogue back and forth. So like proving like here are the dates yeah. that all of this happened. Here's what's here's what's gone on. Here are all the other people who were affected by this because mm-hmm. I got so many other people saying, oh, my God, the same thing happened to me. This like literally mm-hmm. same thing. They didn't want to fix it. So I wanted to do this uh, this piece on it. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's very out of your norm for, con- uh, you know, like content. Right. But um Hmm, that would be interesting. Imagine it ranks number one for <laughs> Samsung on YouTube for like two years oh, straight. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> like you type in Samsung anything, it's like first thing that comes up. Like, <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Woo. But no, I mean, uh, that's a good thing about having a following. I mean, there's a lot of good things about having a big following behind you. But one of them is like, hey, man, you need somebody to listen. Like, they're going to listen if you post something on social. Right. So I saw on your Instagram story, you got a new watch and you yeah. said that Graham has been getting you into watches and I see it's, yeah, it looks pretty nice. Yeah. Frank Mueller. So, or some people say Frank Mueller. Um, yeah, thanks. I appreciate it, man. It, it's a, it's a new one. Um, yeah, Graham kind of got me into it. Uh, many, many months ago, we went to the Rolex store, um, and you were like, oh, you should get a nice watch. Cause I've never bought like nice mm-hmm. watches. And like I, I Rolexes aren't my style. Like I don't like really like the classical look and things like that. And uh, like Pateks and like what um, you know the other Audemars AP. or whatever. Yeah. And um, so I'm not really into those styles. I, I love like um, uh, there's a Richard Milley. Uh, that's a brand I really like, but their watches are like way stupid, like price hundred grand, yeah, thousand, yeah, yeah, like insane. And so Frank, you know, the Frank Mueller, they make some watches that are pretty interesting like uh visually like color schemes and things like that and um you know made in geneva and i really like like that brand and so i've bought a couple watches from them now but um yeah i'm not like i wouldn't call myself super into watches but um i I do like a watch like this like i've thought many times like would i buy an apple watch i'm like i'm just i'm not that type of person um my wife loves her apple watch she doesn't care about any like other kinds of watches and things like that but i think there's just something about wearing a traditional like watch that I just really like, like, you know, so yeah, I'm getting into it. It's a, a good looking bit. watch. It fits you well. Appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. I, I have to have a little color and flair. It has to have like a little style to it for, for it to represent me. I feel like so. Yeah. But should Jack get a watch? I've been trying to tell him for a long time. I'll get the watch yeah. every month. He waits. It keeps going up in price. I got a place in Scottsdale, Arizona, man. You got to come out there with us. Yep. It'll take you over there. And we'll negotiate a little bit with them. And yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll haggle a little bit back and forth. We'll get you a good deal, man. $5,000 later, we'll get you something. 10,000. What do you want to spend? Jack? You just 5, tell 000, me. 10, <laughs> That's a pretty big spread. What Jack wants is I, oh, I'm telling him Submariner. Get oh, a good okay. Rolex Submariner. Yeah. Black dial. So you, you could wear bezel. like a, a classical watch, like traditional. Yeah, I, I like the way it looks. Okay. I think that's more of a sports watch. I wouldn't say. Yeah, technically it is a sports, sports watch. watch. Yeah. Okay. 
So Mariner is a watch that can go with anything. That's one of the watches that it's it's respectable. Okay. You wear it with a suit. You could wear it playing basketball. I just you don't could understand wear it because it was initially created for divers. But why is why is that now like the standard for like they love the design. Wear? The design mm. it's just it's classic design. Interesting. Yeah. And you you posted something recently. It was um, I don't know if it was a video I saw or Instagram story. Some Rolex sold for some crazy amount of money. Rolex right? Daytona. The, the original Rolex Daytona won a half million dollars. Wow. Yeah. It was Jeez. just recently, yeah, at auction. Oh, my gosh. One and a half for a watch? For a watch. Whoa. Do you know who bought it? No. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, was it I, an NFT? <laughs> was it actually? Yeah, so it sold as an NFT. So it's not even the real watch. It's a picture of the... It's a screenshot you, of the watch. Dude, could you imagine if the NFT sold for more money than the actual watch? I wouldn't That'd be surprised. Be hilarious. Like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. How, how much did your watch cost? This one I got uh, negotiated uh, down to sixty four hundred before taxes, so this one's much more fair, affordable. My other one's ten thousand. That's a good looking one. watch too. Like, eh? thanks, I appreciate it. It's it's like lower end franc though. Like my other ones, uh, like Graham felt this one and he's like, oh, it's pretty light. The other one, I, I, man, the other one's really like you pick it up and you're like, oh, this is a watch, mm-hmm. man. But uh, yeah, I like this one. I like this style more than my other watch. I'll be honest, the other one I bought. But now I'm gonna chill on watches for a while. I want to become a watch addict. My wife bought me this thing for Christmas, like one of those store your watch things. Like where you can put like Ooh, 10, like 12 those. watches. That's cool. Yeah, but my problem is I'm like, well, now I feel like I got to fill it up. And I'm like, I don't, I can't the, just put. The spinny thing? No, it's not spin. It's just like a nice thing. You you know, it has like the middle furry piece. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. And then you just like a glass case on top of it. But then I'm like, oh man, I don't want to have a million different watches. Because now this is the only watch I wear pretty much almost every day. Mm-hmm. So mm. that's what I found. Like if I buy something I really like, like I just use that over and over. And then the old thing I had just goes to waste and collects dust but yeah that's happened every single time i gotta watch so are you getting into like a bunch of alternative investments because you just bought a pokemon box for oh, oh yeah let's see it oh okay, let's see it okay let, let's bust this so baby. explain yeah. the story behind this why'd you buy right, this so what happened here with the pokemon okay is uh somebody in the private group they said uh they they showed a picture and they were like i'm trying to sell um and they're also in coaching they're like i'm trying to sell i, I want money but i'm trying to sell um one of my two Pokemon boxes. I'm not sure which one, but one I'm asking thirty thousand, and the other one he's asking forty thousand. And the forty thousand one was for one that had, I think it was a Blue Wing Charizard. So something about that, you have a higher probability of getting a Shadowless. Blah blah blah. Wait, wait, wait. So that was a Shadowless box. It could have been uh, Andre. I, I spoke to Andre yeah. about it. He's like, I don't think it is. Um, I don't know why Andre said that, but he's like, I don't think it is. Even though it was a blue wing Charizard. I don't know how Andre knew. Um, but maybe know, maybe yeah. he's wrong. I don't know. Because I'm pretty sure you could tell which one is going to be shadowless and which one is not. Maybe. Yeah. And he's like, box. Oh, like, Andre sounded really confident about it. So I was like, okay. Hmm. And so, yeah, I, I asked, you know, Andre, text him about it. If he was interested, I text you. I don't even think you text back. So I was like, okay, Graham doesn't <laughs> care. Graham clearly doesn't care. And then Andre was like, uh, you know, he wasn't really like that into it. So, like, he didn't tell me, like, oh, try to get it for this price or something. So, then I negotiated and I said, <clears throat> you know, what about 20, uh, 25000 And, yeah, he, he went with 25000 That's what we ended up doing. And then I gave him 500 bucks extra so he could, like, get a hotel room for the night. Because I wanted to deliver, like, ASAP. So, yeah. This that's is, it. This is, this is the, uh, the box here, okay? So... I just hope I don't un- unravel it somehow. It's crazy to think. For it. It's crazy to think this first edition would be worth like oh. half a million bucks right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. If it was first edition, yeah. And these have been that's going it? for like thirty-five wow. to like forty-five. I've been watching on eBay. So, so that's just the base set unlimited. Yeah, that's just a base set from I think ninety-nine. Um, and so the gentleman that bought this, um, he. Wow. Uh, bought it for he negotiated for I think it was two thousand bucks in 2016, and um, so yeah, I, I'm like wow, that's uh you know he made a pretty sweet profit on that like in a, you know over 10x his money uh, in a matter of a few years. So it would be interesting if you could invest like on an exchange in like the Pokemon market or in the Rolex market Ooh. or the Ferrari market. That oh man, that's an interesting concept. That's probably the next billion. That's dollar probably idea, like yeah. how you can NFT them off, right? So like yeah. you create an NFT for partial shares of or ownership of Dude, a Ferrari I or something. Like that idea, yeah. And if you push it down a little bit in the the middle, you can see the cards and whatnot. Right, but um, wow, yeah, I was um, 
I, I wouldn't have bought that if it was just some random person. I'll be right. honest. Right. It was a trusted. Yeah. 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 It was like, you it's know. Smaller than I would think. Same like it here. It looks mm -hmm. bigger online. Yeah. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It was too. Magic Jack just insane. starts unwrapping oh it. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, that would make for an epic episode, man. This is like, so cool. So what's, what's your plan with that? Uh, just hold it. Yeah. I'm going to get a nice case for a nice clear case. Yeah. Um, and just hold it. Um for yeah long term i don't know you know i could always resell it but i'm like i don't really want to i think it's just a cool piece to have it's almost like art yeah i almost look at it as like an art piece like you know i'll put it out or you know bring it out every once in a while and we can we can look at it and be like Woo, look at this booster box <laughs> Dude, i just yeah man, i just want to open it that's that's the thing me. i want to open oh, it and yeah. find the Charizard. oh gosh <laughs> it's in it there. It's, in there it's it's probably in there it's probably like could a be two. 90 percent chance yeah. it's in there because there was a there was a box logan opened recently yeah, that had two, two. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And like sense. two chances too, mm -hmm. or three chances. And then the, yeah. the other thing I could do if I really wanted to, I could actually sell pack by pack. Um, you know, just you'd be able to probably sell if it, if you did shout outs with that, you'd probably be able to sell them about a thousand dollars a piece. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but yeah, in gentleman I bought it from, he's like, yeah, it's gonna sell. You know, keep it keep it boxed up. He's like, keep it sealed up because it's gonna be worth way more money than. Why than is he selling? So he just when he needed some money, he wanted some money. So um, buy some stocks and stuff like really? that. So yeah, I'm like, uh, he wants to get in the six figure club, and he's not he's not there yet. So he's like, you know, that twenty five thousand he could put in the market and whatnot. So what about the other box? The one with the, the other box yeah. I didn't buy. I, that was the one I was going after actually, uh, and I offered him thirty five thousand, but that had a tear in the plastic. Now he believes it should be worth still just as much even with that tear, but I didn't want to buy something that had a tear in it. I wanted the, you know, you saw that. That looked perfect. And so I'm like, I really, even though the other one was a blue wing Charizard, after Andre told me, he's like, yeah, that's not more than likely shadowless. I was like, ah, with the tear, I was like, ah, forget it. So, Why? So it had a tear in it. How yeah, big was the tear? Pretty big. Really? It was like, um, like a, a good chunk, like this much off of it. So, um, yeah, he said he did that like shortly after he had bought the box, like showing it off to somebody. And um, so I was like, Oh uh, no, that I'm okay. You know what I would have done? You you buy it for a reasonable price. Let's, let's say twenty seven. He wouldn't have sold it for twenty seven. Really? Yeah. Okay. No, I got him down to thirty five, and that's wow. like what we had agreed on. But then it was like mm, the tear, and I was like, no. And then you know this one, and I was like, I could spend less money, yeah. and I felt like he kind of really wanted to keep that one because of the whole blue wing Charizard thing. Um, I feel like he liked that one even more than than this one, so. Yeah. Could have bought it for thirty five, and then sold off all the packs and kept a few for yourself. But then it's shipping true. and dealing with that. But yeah, and then I wouldn't have been able to buy this one because yeah. he was only selling one. Oh, yeah, okay. he wants to keep one. He wants to kind of like hedge his bet. Like, well, gotcha. Pokemon's hot right now. Let me cash out on one of them and uh, keep the other one long term. He wouldn't have sold both of them. Yeah, I might have tried to pursue it if he was selling both, but he he was not going to do that. He was like, "It's it's you whatever one you want to go for, I'm keeping the other one." Wow. So, okay. You would have bought both if he give you the opportunity. Maybe, yeah, I would have considered it, but that wasn't even an option for him. It's like it's it's one or the other essentially. So yeah. So anyways, I'll hold it long term. We'll we'll see what happens with it, and um, no matter what it is, it is like at the end of the day, like these are becoming more and more extinct. Uh, the first editions are almost non-existent now, right? Um, you know, whoever is holding those, it's very few and far between. Because yeah. a lot of people have I think, opened them. Yeah, how many does Gary have? Gary has like... There's nine. Nine of them. Nine. And he probably has one of the bigger collections of anybody, I would imagine. The he biggest. has the most. It yeah. is the biggest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's confirmed. Wow. Yeah. And imagine that's that. first yeah. editions? First edition. Nine. Nine first edition. They're probably worth about half a million a piece. Yeah. Yeah. And so, wow. yeah, the, the few people that have some first editions aren't going to uh, likely open them. They're just going to hold them. They're not going to flood the market with them. There's probably a limited amount. And these, I feel like, are becoming really extinct now, like, which aren't first edition. So, yeah, I looked at it and I was like, and, and you know, he was pretty confident that over time it's going to be worth 100K. But obviously, you know, it's just, it's dependent upon what another yeah. person's willing to pay over time. So, but yeah. did you see this as an investment or did you see it as just something to spend your money? Jeremy on is so fun. flush with cash right now that yeah. he's just trying to like get rid of I, it. I, I saw Graham spend 300,000 on a GT and I was like, okay, well I could spend 25,000 <laughs> on cars. That's <laughs> even cooler. <laughs> Can't let him out flex me. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, I, I did look at it as an investment, but a cool thing. Yeah. I will be honest. Like, Cause it's like, 
how many opportunities do you get for that, man? And like I said, I was looking at it on eBay. And for all those, you're going 35, 45, 50,000. And I would have trust issues with those. Yeah, right. I really would. Um, so, yeah, I'm like, you know, I'm looking at it. And I'm like, you know, he did well. I did well. Everybody's happy. So we'll see. <laughs> hmm. What do you think about NFTs? Oh, I don't have an opinion on it, man. Not non-fungible tokens. Yeah. No, I have no opinion on e NFTs. I, that's really, I know that's like the hot subject right now, but that's just not one. You know, every time we, they talk about it on Millennial Money, I'm just quiet. Yeah, so. we just see your face. Just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, just, you do the Kevin. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at the camera directly. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I, I honestly have no opinion. It, it's interesting. Uh, it's something I'll keep an eye on and... Uh, I don't really have any, anything to add there of value. <laughs> you should come out with your own NFT. Yeah, that'd be a holy smoke is this ain't no jokers. <laughs> you got to be flipping my flapjacks. Have me like it's an artwork where I'm like flipping a flapjack or something. I would love to do an NFT. I think it would be cool. Every thumbnail I do, turn that into a one of one NFT. Wow. I think that would be, be kind of cool. I think that's a great idea. Like signed. I don't know if we could sign the NFTs. Or like have yeah. that be like the original. It's going to be 1280 by 720 or, you know, it's, it's not going to be a super high quality thing, but just oh every gosh. thumbnails, it's on NFT. Your thumbnails are just so dang good. You know, I just I'm trying. It, I yeah. mean, you know, uh, I was talking to Chris about this recently because, you know, he's going to do that, that clips channel and whatnot. And uh, we were talking and I was like, you know, trying to explain to him like how much of an art it is to title a video great. And you are, you are the top level and everybody falls underneath you. And I feel like I've gotten to a pretty good level, but you're on another level. Like, and um, like people don't really realize like how much it's a skill. Yeah. It, yeah like, you know, I, I know you won't gas yourself up, but it, it's a skill like thumbnails titles it's a true skill and i'm sure you you have experienced this jack being around graham every day for you know i don't know the last two years or whatever it's a true skill um to really title something an interesting title that makes people say i've got to watch this video i've, I've got to check this out man and um yeah so your thumbnails man you might be have something there you should do your titles oh too. man it's it's honestly it's lately become my least favorite part really of yeah why? Because of how much pressure there is to okay. do well on a title thumbnail. Like you could have the best video in the world, mm -hmm. but without the proper title and thumbnail, it's all for nothing. That's true. That's a really good point. So I hate having to be like, what title is going to work? What thumbnail is going to work? How do we make this stand out? There becomes a point where it's just, it's so much writing on this yeah. that it's just, like any mistake in that. Like even I go with Jack and we'll like come back and like, should we do this green or do you like this bluish color instead mm -hmm. on this? Right? <laughs> like every little detail mm -hmm. has to be so precise. And if it's not, the video's done. Yeah. And so then, and then there's like thousands of dollars on the line it's true. per title and thumbnail mm -hmm. that can make a huge difference throughout the channel. It's yeah. Like, I, it, it's true. And uh, then it's like the algorithm. Oh no, right. I, I hit bad. I hit bad again. No. Yeah. So, I mean, it could be, it could honestly be a hundred thousand dollar mistake yep. to, have like three titles and thumbnails not perform yeah 100 so you know yeah. and it's just like so so i don't like the pressure of it the pressure if there's yeah. no pressure <laughs> and it's just having fun yeah by all means mm -hmm. um and it's, it's, it, it's good though when it does hit when it does hit it's like oh, yeah, you yeah. did something right yeah and sometimes but, yeah. you'll you know i'm sure there's times where you think something is great and then you're like, oh, that then just didn't hit. It's almost like a, I feel like it's almost like being a musician, right? You're a musician and you, you come out with this song and you're like, oh man, this is a banger, man. This is going to go huge. And then it like just doesn't hit. And then you're like, what went wrong there? Do you ever have that experience? Yeah, all the time. Okay. And when it doesn't hit, I'm like, oh, that's why. Sometimes okay. you, sometimes it'll post, you think it'll do well, it doesn't. And mm -hmm. then you look at it again and be like, yeah, no, I could see why it didn't do well. Let's change yeah. it up. So. Do, you, do you envy Kevin at all from the respect of like he puts out so much content that it almost doesn't matter? I mean, his titles and thumbnails are still somewhat important, but he puts out such a a gauntlet of, of content all the time. He's almost removed that stress of like. Yeah, I don't know. Some not really because I know I couldn't do what Kevin does, mm -hmm. so I don't look at that so much with envy. Like, oh, look at Kevin doing this. Mm -hmm. I mentioned to Jack, it's like. Kevin could get away with these titles and thumbnails and get so many views, but I just, I know I can't make five videos a day. Yeah. I can't live stream as much as he does. So it's mm -hmm. like, I, I don't, I don't 
envy or mm-hmm. I, I don't look at that with jealousy because yeah. I know like he's on a different level than I am in terms <laughs> yeah. of what he's doing. It's completely separate from mine. Mm-hmm. So yeah. no, that makes sense. But yeah. yeah, it is nice from the perspective of not having that stress of uh, every video has got to yeah. hit. I think Kevin could probably all he needs to do, in my opinion, is just go live twice a day. Once market open, once market close. If he just yeah. and then one summary. That's enough content. That is That's enough. more than you enough. You can't even content. watch all of the content he's doing. No. You can't do it. You literally, even at 2x two, two speed, you I can't do it. I think he has to, um, you know, keep it up. I think if he starts feeding only, let's say, two videos hypothetically a day, and you go from six videos to two videos, like, views are going to go down. There's no doubt in my mind views will go down. And, um, and then you get in this whole bad cycle around the algorithm and then it like starts feeding you less and then you kind of get it. You know, I don't know. I feel like that could be, that's, you know, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't see that working. Uh, I mean, I've tried it with financial education three where I went content crazy, got view, pushed views way up and then dropped off content and then try to go it up, up again and it wouldn't be the same. And so the great thing with him is he's continued to pour out more content where he all of a sudden started doing two a day, then three a day, then four a day. And now he's doing like six videos a day. But if you start going backwards, man, it would be like you going to one video a week, mm-hmm. you know, or shoot. No, that would be like you going one video a month, you know, because he's putting out six a day. Right. It'd be like you doing one a month. Gosh. Yeah. Now that would just be, uh, it would be devastating your channel, I would assume, you know, because even if you got a million of people to watch that one video come out with each month. It's just, there's no way of feeding the other videos on the right. blog. Yeah. So Jeremy, everyone yes. wants to know, how is your net worth divided up? Oh, divided up. Okay. So uh, it's a complicated subject. Cause I mean, sometimes, you know, it's interesting. Like, do you value YouTube channels? I'd you say value no. Instagram? no. Let's just talk I'd about no. hard cash. Okay. cash so like, and assets. If we're not taking anything out, do you? Do I value my business? Or no, no. Okay. So this is just okay. like straight up money you could pull out. Okay. So I am. Oh gosh, heavy stocks, sixty percent plus stocks. Um, maybe fifteen twenty percent real estate, rest cash. Yeah, or maybe twenty five percent cash. No, let me see. So cash, I'm probably I have probably I actually have more cash than I do real estate. So yeah, uh, I'd probably say twenty percent cash, ten percent real estate, seventy percent stocks, um, and 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 point uh, zero 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 one percent uh, Pokemon cards. Now you know my net worth. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so yeah, definitely, definitely stock heavy. Yeah, still to this day, and and I don't see that probably ever changing. So what are you doing with that cash? So most of it, I just keep, unfortunately, in like checking accounts, savings accounts, things like that. Um, some of it I have been putting into um, a little bit into cryptos. I forgot I'm a mm-hmm. teeny bit into cryptos now. Little USDC. Um, oh, you did that. Are yeah. you getting interest? Yeah, like nine percent or whatever. Wow. Yeah, how much? How much cash interest. did you put in there? Not much. Only probably maybe thirty thousand to start. Because I'm a little unsure. I'm like, oh, maybe twenty thousand, twenty or thirty. Okay. I'm a little unsure because I'm like, I just I'm still having trouble wrapping my head around that. I'm just like, how can somebody pay this nine percent interest rate and still make money? That's right. just crazy to me, man. Unless but, they're printing their own USDC, so they're sounds able like to no like, one can give it. a direct answer to that question. I never understood Every, it. Yeah, everyone's like, well, they lend it out on the blockchain and then they return it back to you and they make some money on it. That, they, th- but that's like, why I can't put a lot in it because I'm still a little sketchy. Yeah, just, it, same. In like they say, if it's too good, too good to that's be true. Too good to be true is. for me. It's too good to be true. I mean, if they offered. Three percent, I'd actually feel more comfortable. Yeah, because then I'm like, all right, I could wrap my mind around that. Not nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know, because who's to say they can't just print more USDC to pay you back? Mm-hmm. I don't just, understand yeah. who's who are buying these loans at like what thirty percent. Then how are they able to give nine percent? No who idea. are these people? I don't know anybody <laughs> that's it, receiving loans from. Yeah, them. It, it's like funds and whatnot for the most part. It's like uh, different uh, crypto funds and things like that that supposedly they're making so much uh, money that it makes sense for them to basically 
um, had that cash go in their account. Andre could probably explain ten times better. We should. We should. Andre we should tried. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we should really like push Andre on this and millennial money one night. Okay. I think it'd be interesting because you know he's really the he, of us. He's by far the most crypto guy. So I would love it if he could really like dive into that. Andre, if you see this, which you probably won't, man, we're gonna push you on that. Andre, if you're watching this comment, <laughs> I'm watching. I'm one, watching two, this. Three, four. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> Exclamation point. Oh, Asterisk. <laughs> I, I, yeah, no, nobody's every everyone's tried explaining it to me. I don't understand it. Yeah, and I'm not good at explaining either. Like I kind of get the concept, but I'm still I'm like, how do they make money on this? This sounds like insane. But anyway, so a little bit of money over there. But yeah, I'm I'm still stocks heavy, man. I, I don't know if I ever see a day where I'm not stocks heavy. Um, to be honest, you know, because even in a market where I feel like we're a little richly valued, no doubt, I, I still find deals. So, do you own any like funds or anything? Nope, zero. Zero funds, zero ETFs, zero funds. Uh, yep. What about a business you're starting? <laughs> what? No. Oh gosh, <laughs> we're gonna start with that one. Yeah, so we got a business we're starting. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> we got a business we're starting, but um, I can't talk a ton about it. But it's been it's been a lot to set up. You know, obviously you're one of the biggest you know shareholders in the company, and then got a lot of other pe- talented people in on that project. Really looking forward to that. It is app related. I don't want to get into the details of it because I'll let that speak when you know we can really speak about the details, which we're not at that level yet. But yeah, I mean that that's really exciting, man. It, it's exciting to put together a new company that's fresh. Um, but man, it's a lot. It's a lot. You know, it definitely takes a lot of my time. It uh, you know dealing with you know the setting up of the company with lawyers because we're doing it like real like this is like real mm. proper like like Delaware Corporation. Um, dealing with all the different stakeholders and, and you know, the, the the team behind it that's creating it and, and whatnot, man. It, it's definitely taken a good amount of my time, but it's uh, it's going to be exciting when we launch it. I think it's going to be fun to do something uh, that's so far out there that, um, you know, is trying to try to do something really, really big. And I think that's that's fun. And so, yeah, we'll, we'll have more to share with you guys in the future. What if there's that. a link down below in the description where we could uh, have people <sighs> sign up for an announcement? Can we do that? We can do that. We can do that. Maybe even pin comment. No promises. But uh, yeah, uh, certainly we could do something in the description where, you know, at least folks can maybe uh, get on the wait list to maybe maybe there'll be beta beta folks mm. that that can, you know, test it before we really get it into the market. When's like, the, yeah. Yeah. When's the launch date? Launch date. Oh my gosh. That's the hardest part. I I would say between the next 30 and 90 days. Like I think worst case scenario, 90 days. I think best case scenario, 30 days. So somewhere in there we should launch. I'm hoping within the next 30 days, at least to have a decent product in our hands that we can start testing and playing around with and seeing like the bugs and, and those sorts of things and maybe get to the early beta crew and maybe these folks maybe watching this video can be in that that earliest stage to get their hands on it and, and try it out and see things like that so but yeah it's really tough i mean it's not you know when you're creating something like this it's not really like you can just say well it's done like it in 14 days from now it doesn't really work like that so um but yeah i'm thinking 30 to 90 days so Let's hope. Let's hope. Yeah. I did make an announcement of it in one of my videos on Wednesday coming up. I'll Ooh. maybe have you listen to that. I just okay. I just said it's a financial app yeah. that Fair covers uh, information that I'm not able to discuss on the channel. Oh, that's perfect. So yeah. it, vague enough. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, it extends beyond what I could do in a video. Oh, that's exciting. So, yeah, no, okay. that, that's great. All right. Yeah, I, I'm looking super forward to it, man. It, it, it's something like um, I've been wanting to build something um that's a big uh maybe in the finance community um that you know a lot of people really enjoy get a ton of value out of that's a thing and it's a free product that that's where i think is really interesting so yeah we'll we'll see it it, it's a lot of work man it's a lot of work to really put it together and and things like that so but uh yeah i'm happy and jack you'll be the first to try it out okay (laughs) (laughs) i'm excited as long as you keep my pokemon cards safe okay (laughs) But yeah, man, I, I'm I'm pumped. So cool. I'll probably talk about. Do that you have any hot show. takes? Hot takes. Yeah. Uh, any drama? Takes. Any gossip? Any drama? Any gossip? What's going on with you and Kevin right oh, now? Oh man, he does cool now, or because he was t- he called me out the other day. He's talking. 
talking some crap. Yeah, oh, was yeah. He? yeah. He was mad. I heard it. Yeah, he I heard was. his yelling from the other room no way. over the phone. He's talking about your family and like. Yeah. No, you're I'm lying. Yeah, like, no. There's no way. <laughs> go there. Like, nah, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, gosh. He took it seriously. Like he's oh, really. <laughs> gosh. Yeah. Like there's no he way sh- we would have gone that he far. He shorted the stock. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, you know, I, I don't like it if somebody talks bad about my stock. So, yeah, I mean, you know, with the, with the whole Kevin situation, you know, I, I kind of just got fed up recently with um, people at, like being like, oh, Kevin said this about your stock or, you know, whatever stock. And um, it just kind of like like frustrates me because I'm like, then I have to answer questions and like, I feel like, oh, I have to go out there and like prove my case against why Kevin's wrong or something like that to these, these individuals. And so that gets a little frustrating. And I have tremendous amount of respect for Kevin as a YouTuber and just as like a person, like tremendous amount of respect where I don't have respect for Kevin is as a stock picker yet. It doesn't mean I can't get there over time. It's just like when you're in the stock market community, you've got to like have stock after stock hit and you know, like, like, you know, big winners that aren't just like the the ones that you know you're hearing from other people essentially and so you know with kevin i'm like why do i even have to answer questions in regards to kevin's opinion on tattooed chef or dropbox i heard something he had said blah, 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 about dropbox and so i'm like that's what really led to this frustration and that that's why it was like let, let me let me make this public let me let me let me make this case publicly and um go that route and now we got what is that a phone what is that? I don't know. It's calling Who's, me. Is that your phone? That's mine. That's yeah. your phone. Yeah. Great. Nice. I bet it's my mom. It's Great. probably me. Do you want to get up what and a, see who's calling me? Nice just, just tell me who's calling me. Well, imagine it's Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> Could uh, you imagine? Uh, but anyways. Uh, yeah, anyway. So, okay. yeah. So, this, that's, that was the situation there. I think the beef's over now, to be honest. I think it's played out. Um, you know, I, I've stated my bull case. He doesn't really have a bear case, but he's not, uh, you know, super positive on it. So. So beneath all of the fun and games, there was a little bit of, did feel like uh, yeah. a little disrespected there, yeah. that you had to respond to someone. Exactly. Maybe that hadn't quite proved themselves in your point of view in yes. the stock community. Yeah, because I, I looked at Kevin and I said, you know, like I said, I respect him a ton as a, as a person. I respect him as a ton as a YouTuber. I'm like, that guy's a beast. But yeah, w- when you're coming to my arena, which is stock picking, stock market investing, I say, Okay, like, like, what have you proven? Like, why should I have to, you know, like, go against you or something like that? Like, like, you know, why should I have to answer questions on this person's behalf and prove, like, my stock against yours? Because, like, Kevin, like, I respect him also as a real estate investor. Like, I remember I bought his real estate course before it was even, like, formed. And so, you know, when all of a sudden, you know, but now he's, like, so into stocks, right? Mm-hmm. And he's really got into it in the last year. He's posting a lot of stock market videos and things like that. And then... Yeah, I just like I just got frustrated with it, and I'm like, okay, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about these things. So, but that that goes for anybody in, in the stock market community. Like sometimes, you know, folks pop up here and there, and you're like, you know, who's this person and things like that. And it's just, you know, yeah, it's something you'd have to deal with um, in the communities. So, so yeah. what do you say to an individual? No one is specific that mm-hmm. may not own any tattooed chef. Uh, I won't say anything to him, to be honest. So buy the product. It's out at your local Target. Okay, that's about it. But uh, as far as the stock, I like the stock. <laughs> the stock. <laughs> if he likes the stock, I like the stock. <laughs> yeah. If he's in, I'm in. Oh, gosh. If he's that's still in, I'm still in. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So anyways, we'll, we'll see how that one plays out. That's a five, 10 year play out that I think has massive, massive upside potential. We shall see. It would be interesting to look at Kevin's returns th- this last year. And like yeah. analyze it per stock and see what it's what it's come out to be. Yeah, yeah, I, and I'm sure Kevin's doing really good. Um, and, and so there's no question about that. It's just like you have to prove yourself over a period of time. <laughs> That's the other thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I've seen it before. Where you know, like there would be somebody in the private group that gets like a 500 percent return. Yeah. Like blows me out of the water. And it doesn't mean they're necessarily a better investor than me. They destroyed me last year. But like, it's like, what can you prove? It's like YouTube, right? Let's say YouTube's a game. Like somebody could come out in the finance space and come out with some viral video, gets like a million views. Doesn't mean they're better than you. Or it doesn't mean like, oh, they're the king of YouTube now because they had that video that got 10 million views or something like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's just the way it is in, in every single space. And uh, yeah, stock market investing is competitive, man. And I'm really competitive when it comes to that. And I, I take my, my craft pretty serious. And uh, you know, anybody that kind of comes in and I'm just like, 
you know, I'm not sure how serious they are. It, uh, I get a little uh, in my feelings about it. So that's good. You're passionate mm-hmm. about it. Oh, a hundred percent. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. So, but yeah. What's one thing in investing, uh, specifically stocks, let's say, that you think you could do better in? Oh, when it comes to stocks, um, I mean, I'm always trying to get better at everything. You know, it, it's not like there's one glaring thing nowadays. It's just like. You know, that whole saying like 1% better. Uh, I don't even know if I can get 1% better, but I can always like understand more business models. I think that's the one thing, like understand business models, maybe understand them faster because sometimes it takes weeks or months for me to like really get wrap my head around it. So that that's maybe one thing, but yeah, I, I, I play, you know, growth stocks, value stocks. I'm in dividend stocks. I'm in turnaround plays. So I'm kind of almost, you know, doing everything now as far as an investor um, but it's always about doing it even better. So what's thing, one thing you think you could be doing better, Graham, as a YouTuber, Ooh. as a YouTuber. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, probably taking more risk and, and, uh, off topic content. Mm. It's probably what I could do. So like diversifying the content, right? Like that. That's probably what I could do. Yeah. The vlog channel. And then what do you think Jeremy could? <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, I think Jeremy could improve your thumbnails. Yeah. I think your thumbnails are, uh, you, the, the main picture of you is blurry. Really? Yeah, it's really, it's really bad. High res wow. thumbnails. Yeah. See, that's matter. what's crazy because I thought it was really good. No. This is what's so and I don't like the hat. Okay. The I hat. don't like that. Yeah. yeah, you use the hat in every thumbnail. So yeah. I would do a um a less exaggerated face, actually, funny enough. Okay. Less over the top. Um the high quality. Wow. Yeah. Okay. No, that's great to know. I'm just gonna go on a photo shoot at some somebody that has yeah. a great camera. Yeah, because it's funny because I look at it and I'm like, oh, that's really high quality, but like I said, there's levels to things, man. And yeah. like you feel like it's yeah. not that high quality. I think the videos themselves are fine because mm-hmm. I listen to them. So to yeah. me, it, it, it it's it's memorable to see the the, the goofy little pictures mm-hmm. coming up. So I don't really look at the video itself. Yeah. But the title thumbnail are something that are important to me. Titles are okay. It's the mm-hmm. thumbnail that I feel like you could really improve on the thumbnail. Wow, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know. I created that thumbnail uh, from Millennial Money, and then you created one, and I was just like, "Oh my yeah. gosh, that blew me out of the water!" I'm like, "You're the thumbnail man for yeah. Millennial Money now." I'm like, that's "You got to be abstract now, like abstract in terms of the thumbnail. Like, it's really got to be. It's got to make people question, like, what am I looking at? Oh, like, what is this? What sometimes this it doesn't do even need to make sense. No, honestly, <laughs> so long as it gets people's attention. For yeah. example, we'll make a video about a real estate crash, but we'll be happy to put the background as a galaxy." Or as oh, like yeah, a that, huge yeah. like like war zone, just because mm, it, it gets nuclear people's attention. Yeah, yeah. See those. it doesn't yeah. necessarily yeah. need to make sense with the content. Yeah, but you see it, and the colors yeah. are so vibrant. And you're like, whoa! And it stops you for one second, just enough for you to see. Oh, let me see the title, or yeah. just enough for you to think, should I watch this? It, it gets your attention. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, there's one I made that makes no sense whatsoever, but it did really well. It's um, the stock market is about to drop again. Okay. And the thumbnail was me in the middle of a stock chart. And the one side is up high, <laughs> the other side is, is down. Mm. We j- This is a random stock chart that we just happened to find. Okay. Just I don't even know if it was like for the right decade. Wow. But we did an arrow to one side <laughs> and then a circle on the other with a question mark. Yeah. <laughs> making people think like, no yeah. idea. we're here and w- what's going yeah. on over there. Yeah, yeah. Made no sense. Made no sense. There was nothing behind it, but it just looked cool. So yeah. like stuff like that. Or um in our thumbnail, we we're talking about a split, so I like took the images and like split them in half. Yeah. Like it's like one part one side versus another. So like yeah. just it doesn't need to make sense. The other one's like the end of the stock market, something like that, where I'm like half underwater. That was so good. I love yeah, that. Thank you. That yeah. was my favorite thumbnail. That was the thumbnail that, that title we did that was, was yeah. ten of ten. Thanks. That title. Because that title made me say, Oh, what like what does that mean? Yeah. Like, you know, you almost feel like you got to watch it. it. Like, uh, Andre had a really good one recently with Ethereum. Ethereum's about to self destruct. Yeah. I loved yeah. it. I was like, oh gosh, man. You're like, how can you not watch that? What, what does that mean? Yeah, self destruct? Exactly. <laughs> We've been coming out with different mm. terms now that make no, no sense. sense. Like, the stock market just flipped. Totally. The stock ambiguous. market yeah. just reversed. The infinite I just used money that glitch. On financial yeah. Education 3. Yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, what we do is we're looking up synonyms of certain words mm-hmm. and then be like, this sounds kind of cool. That sounds yeah. neat. Yeah. So, <laughs> like yeah. Graham was thinking about using the word tantrum in a title. 
Yeah. It, like, it yeah. didn't really make sense in the context. No. <laughs> the because stock, if you, when you think of... I'm oh, using yeah. that one. The stock market just threw a tantrum. Yeah, because yeah. it's like you think of a little kid throwing a tantrum, yeah. but it yeah. would get your attention. And that's yeah. all that really matters. Oh, man. That's good stuff. You know, I, I was thinking about this one night. I was like, imagine like... I wonder if there's ever going to be like a next generation of finance YouTubers that are like way bigger than like us. And like, like, could you picture that or could, is it like maybe not YouTube, but maybe another uh, social media? I would say another social media, probably TikTok. Okay. okay. Where it's just like, we're, we're like blown away. Like, wow, that many people watch those videos and stuff. I think so at some point. Be. Yeah. There has just like to Dave be. Ramsey, right? Yeah. It's like back in the time, like back yeah. in the day, he Dave was Ramsey's like still the biggest though. So. Well, maybe uh, not on YouTube. Different, maybe yeah. amongst a different like, demographic yeah. as well. Yeah. But yeah, like he owned his own platform, there's, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. There's got to be. Yeah. I bit 10 years. I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure at some point. It could be interesting. Yeah. Because I mean, our, our, our generation, we weren't really the ones that grew up on YouTube. Like we started using YouTube, but it will be interesting with like the kids that are on the come up right now that maybe grew up with YouTube, like since they were kids. And then they get like financial knowledge and then they share it and maybe they understand like the YouTube stuff better than we do. And yeah, yeah, we look back and it'd be interesting. You know what it's going to be? It's, it's, I have a feeling it's going to be another platform. I don't think it's going to yeah. be YouTube. I think okay. it's going to be some, uh, like a TikTok mm -hmm. where they're all sophisticated. I, maybe it's like you put on these VR, like this headset, like everything's all crap. Like we would mm. try this and just not get it. Yeah. That but makes they'll sense. understand it. Mm -hmm. So I have a feeling it's going to be something, it's going to yeah. be something like that. No, I, I got a picture yeah. of that. Yeah. That, that should be interesting. And one day we're going to be too old. We're going to be unrelatable. Uh, to like the new the new demographic the new audience they're gonna see like oh look yeah. at the grandpas they're uh, talking about the buy and hold now we're gonna be trading <laughs> some like futuristic call option oh, hedged alpha <laughs> beta theta gang whatever it is <laughs> and, oh, like, my God. there's gonna be some new level of investing that we don't even know exists so what's interesting is you know i always flirt around with this idea of leaving youtube or like like leaving social media but if i want to stay on the great news is like um, as you get older, you actually get a lot more respect, you know, in, in the stock market, mm -hmm. like the more decades you get in and you do on a high level, like the more people are going to want to watch you and, and stay tuned and stay around. Um, because at the end of the day, like, you know, what I learned is like, if you, if, if people make money from you, if they really like hearing your opinion, they're going to stay around. I, I've just tested like, you know, uh, I mean, I could, I put in probably the most minimal work to videos, but people still watch it because they really just, they're, they're not there to be entertained. They literally just want to hear my opinion on what next stock I'm buying or what I'm doing in the market. Like you're not there for some flashy, you know, show like, you know, respect to you and like Andre, like, you know, I could see people watching your channel, Andre's channel who, you know, they, they are, you know, they want a show like you guys put on a show, man. It's, it's flip. It's amazing. And it's like, you know, my videos, it's not like that. It's like, you're just there to hear the opinion, mm -hmm. man. And that's it. And so with the stock market community, like, you know, the longer you're in it and proving yourself, like the more respect you get. So that's the, no. I'm like a young, I'm still like a really young person in the stock market, like only being 12 or 13 years, but being 31, like most people that have a lot of respect in the stock market are fifties, sixties, at least forties, usually forties, fifties, sixties, Warren Buffett, 90. You know what I mean? It's like, so th that's a cool thing as far as that goes, but yeah, man. Do you have any advice for Graham on his stock picking or investing strategies? Uh, Graham, I mean, I feel like he could be maybe more aggressive, you know, Graham, you, you, you're, you know, you're, you're very play it safe. I, feel, uh -huh. I would say, um, so maybe a little more aggressive, um, but that's about it. I mean, you do pretty good, you know? Um, I, I don't feel like you're trying to be like a professional stock picker. I feel like you're just like, you look at something you're like, yeah, oh, that looks like a pretty good deal. Let me yeah. buy some of that. I don't think you're the type of person that's like, listen to conference calls and stuff like no. that. Yeah. So, you know, and, and you no, mostly buy I just, index funds. I literally watch what Kevin does okay. and buy his stocks. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so I'm I sold out a tattooed chef. I'm out. Shorted Walgreens. I'm out. <laughs> Shorted Planet 13. Yeah, no, I'm that was That was too far, Graham. That, that was too far. Put it all in shift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shift. What is going on with that company? I, I don't I'm know. about to look into that one. Okay. Oh, dang. Well, anyways, you're mostly yeah. index funds. You 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 dollar cash. Uh, no, I actually I'm more now an individual stock because just because those went up so much. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm like 30, 40 percent index funds and then sixty individual stocks. Okay. Started off fifty fifty, but those individual stock really 
took off. So interesting. Maybe it's like 35%. Uh, it, it, is one. there, uh, here's an interesting ad break. Uh, is there, have you even thought about the chance of ever leaving YouTube and like a time frame, or is it so far away that you like can't even imagine yourself no, leaving I th- YouTube? I, I think about it every now and then. Okay. Um, and it's like, well, you know, if, if I stop, do you kind of go out on the top mm-hmm. or do you keep, keep going? So I think it's some, at some point it's, it's probably got to shift to something okay. more sustainable. It's just, it, it's the main channel. It takes such a long time to plan out every video. Mm-hmm. So I, at some point, it might go more to like the second channel, the the podcast, maybe a vlog. Okay, I don't know. You know, by the time this posts, we're actually going to have the first episode of the Sta Family. Posted. Oh yeah, yeah, we started the Sta Family. Yeah, so nice. that's a vlog. Um, okay. Yeah, so the goal is that we could post one to two episodes a week as a bonus. Of and basically, like I, I'm telling Jack, I don't want to go out of my way. I mm-hmm. don't want to do anything special. I don't want anything scripted. Nothing crazy. Just. I feel like throughout the week, we'll have 10 minutes of content. Behind the scenes just stuff. Behind the scenes stuff. Just, yeah. It, it doesn't have to even be work related. Just random stuff. Yeah. 10 minutes of content for an entire week that's entertaining to watch. That's, that's the goal. Cool. And just post once a week. Yeah, I like that. That's a cool Maybe idea. twice if there's something exciting going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can see that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. But I, like I think, idea. yeah, at some point, something more sustainable because yeah. I really like I can't be making three videos a week on the main channel indefinitely. Yeah, it's sh- it's it's taken its toll. Yeah, and some days I love it, and like that's all I want to do. And other days, it's like I just I gotta get a video out because I don't want to fall behind. I don't I don't want to not post a video. Mm-hmm. So it's a fine balance between the two. Yeah, it, it's it's performance on a high level, man. I don't think that's the thing people get about it. It's it's like I, I remember when the Paul brothers were going crazy. Yeah. You know, Jake and Logan, like they were pulling in, you know, three million at least a video for Jake, and it was like five million, six million for Logan. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching them, and I was just like, man, if they keep going on this, they're going to be some of the biggest celebrities in the yeah. world. And uh, eventually, you know, the, the whole you know forest situation happened with Logan, and then Jake kind of stopped. But it was just like it, it was it's clear like eventually. Eventually, like it was going to be too much, like especially that vlog lifestyle. I'm trying to make a vlog every day. I remember Casey Neistat when Casey Neistat was going crazy on YouTube and he was pulling in like at that time he was the biggest before Jake and Logan really yep. took the, the mantle. And uh, but he just always used to talk about like how it was so taxing. It was like every day, seven days a week, constantly thinking about it, constantly. And he's like, you know, it almost caused him to get a divorce and stuff like that because just too much. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you want to stay on top. It's it's fun, but man, it is it is uh yeah, it's taxing, it's yeah. stressful. I want to keep it going as long as I can, but mm-hmm. I realize at some point it's got to scale back. Yeah. So it's probably not going to be just all of a sudden nothing. It'll probably be well now now it's twice a week, or now it might be once a week, or something that's a little bit more relaxed. Yeah, I could see you that. Know? Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting, you know, with you to like let somebody else kind of like, let's say, take the mantle uh, from you like over time, you know, whoever that person is like, you know, and and kind of letting go of like, I feel like you're kind of still the king of, of YouTube finance, even though Kevin gets more views than by far everybody, yeah, right. it, but he's, he puts out so much content, like I feel like still you're kind of that guy and it'll be interesting, like if you want to let that go, Um it, or if that even means anything to you or anything like that, because you are recognized as that person and it's like somebody else takes it. Does it hurt at all? Yeah, sometimes you don't know until it happens. Sometimes so. I feel like it's better on your own terms. Yeah. Because then it's like, then you made the choice mm-hmm. um, and it's not done. Like you just, you burn out or something happens like that. So, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll see the plan. I mean, I at least see throughout the next like year or two. Yeah. Keep the same schedule or as long okay. as I can. You're gonna wait till I retire and, and still yeah. like have my head straight, and then you'll be like, okay, I can yeah. do it now. And then two but, weeks later, yeah. done. But regardless, I think the podcast is something. Absolutely, keep that up. The second yeah. channel, absolutely keep that up. The vlog, the vlog might actually get more interesting if I'm not. Graham likes the sick. podcast in the second channel because he like hands off all of this stuff, That's and so all you, yeah. all you have to do for the podcast is show up and right. obviously yeah. organize the guests and stuff like that. Right. Which is pretty nice. It's, yeah, and like yeah. I was thinking, I was like, even if, uh, let's say I, I walked away from YouTube, I would still want to do Millennial Money every week because yep. I'm like, that's just fun. You right. know what I mean? Like that's a good time. Right. Get on there, still be active on social yeah. media and like debate some stuff. Yeah, and, and the and hardest part is really coming up with a topic, planning, filming, editing for the main channel. Mm-hmm. Title some of those. Like, but you can delegate a lot of that work. I can't delegate planning. I could delegate some ideas, but Jack and I spitball ideas all the time. And like, yeah. we'll come up with 10 ideas, but they all suck. 
So, and then mm. we're back to the drawing board. Yeah. Uh, filming, I don't mind it because I know I could get it done. Mm-hmm. Planning is the, is the top. Getting in the zone and planning out a video that I think would do well. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I can see that. It's, whew, it's a lot of work, man. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else, Jeremy? I got nothing. I got one quick question. What are your top three stocks right now? Top three stocks I'm buying right now. Corsair Gaming, Tattooed Chef, and third would be, oh man, third one's really tough, between GGTTF and Facebook for number three. At the Let's moment. say you could only hold three stocks for the next 10 years. What stocks? Oh man, that's a whole different debate there. Three stocks for the next 10 years. Okay, then I'm going with the planet. Um, I'm going with Tattooed Chef, and I'm going with Facebook. No Tesla? Uh, Tesla is very compelling, man. It, it's between Tesla and Facebook because it, it's like Facebook's way safer than Tesla. Um, you know, it's just like they're already a cash flow machine. Right. Tesla has to become a cash flow machine. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe Tesla. I don't know. You, uh, maybe I'd kick that out. But Planet's already taken risk, and so it's like, do I want a, a Planet risk with a Tesla risk with? Um, you know, Tattoo Chef still is somewhat of a risk, right? Because I mean, even though it's a food business, it's like hyper growth. The marketing. Yeah. Oh gosh. Uh. <laughs> Unproven marketing. <laughs> uh, it's tough, man. Is picking your favorite stocks like you know to only own, you know, three stocks. It's like picking which one of your kids is your favorite, man. You can't, you can't <laughs> which do which one is your favorite? If you have to pick one. Well, it is. <laughs> no, they see this video in like yeah. twenty years. Like, remember what you said, Dan? <laughs> I'm the favorite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now I have the throne. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, cool. What stock do you think is really undervalued right now? Oh, well, I mean, I just said it. Like, I feel like, uh, I feel like Corsair, if we're talking just undervalued Corsair, mm-hmm. Corsair Gaming, CRSR, that's uh, just speaks undervalued. It's like 4P of 20 with, you know, massive growth for the next five, 10 years. So I feel like Tattoo Chef's a good value, but it's, it's high growth with, you know, you could say high valuation at the moment. But yeah, Corsair is like, yeah, it's it's hard. It's like, it's almost impossible for me to look and be like, oh, I didn't make any money in, in Corsair over the next five years. Dropbox would be up there too, but it's it's climbed a bit. So, mm. so yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for coming on, Jeremy. It was great Thank seeing you, you as oh, per man. usual. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me again, man. I can't wait to do this again next time. It's always a good time. We, we talk about a lot of stuff, so I appreciate it. These are always the longest episodes, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if we could just keep talking about stock after stock, the market, it's like, you know, we could go for days. But yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Cool. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, make sure to subscribe, smash the like button, hit the notification bell. All of our information is down below in the description, where you could also get a free stock. Get your free stock down there, too. It's totally free. costs you absolutely nothing, so you may as well do it. Thank you guys so much, and uh, until next time. Because one of these All is right. broken, I want to make sure we're using the right ones. Cap. Right. Well.